guys and girls. Bob Brogan back here for some more racing life. In Automobilista 2. Good to see you all. How are you? How am I? I'm doing alright. Thank you very much. Thanks for asking. We're back for the second time this week to crack on with our career in possibly one of the finest apps ever made for Automobilista 2. Racing Life, the single player career mode which allows you to live out your dreams as a racing driver. It's effectively a career mode. And it's great. We're on our second season. We've gone from the lowest ranks of the Brazilian motorsport scene, which involves the uh, Copa FL series, the Hot Cars Championship, the uh, Formula V series, GT5 series, and now we're in our second season. We find ourselves in the middle of a GT3 championship, a Formula 3 championship, a stock car championship, and an LMP4 championship, but not for long. Not for long, guys, because the GT3 championship is going to come to a finish today. We have a championship decider, we have a season finale where there may be a chance of taking home some silverware, if you hadn't already guessed from the... Uh, from the thumbnail on the video. Why do they call it silver anyway? It's gold. Anyway. And we're also going to be wrapping up the Stock Car Championship. Um, a little bit further back in the standings on that one, to be honest. So I don't stand a chance of winning any trophies there. Maybe a top five in the series could be on the cards. <coughs> Excuse me. We've also got the Formula 3 Championship, but that's going to be round four of six. And we've also got the LMP4 Championship, which is also going to be round four, but I think that's four of five. Or four of six, I can't remember. So basically, lots of... Lots of important races today that could pretty much decide where this racing life career in Automobilista 2 is going to go. Because, well, let me switch it over to racing life very quickly. As you can see, this is our current profile. So we have... 51 races on the board, we got 14 poles, 25 podiums, and 18 wins. And a lot of those wins did come in Season 1. It's been pretty slim pickings recently, if, I've, if I'm being honest with you. And we have one race left with our sponsor, Rexona. Good to see 100 Mile Hour Pixels. Hey, Sean, Mark Hallowell. Ricardo, good to see you all. Thank you for tuning in. Absolutely great to have you here. If you do enjoy today's stream, by the way, don't forget to leave it a like. Say hi in chat. And, sub and subscribe because we've got a lot of action to come. Hey, JDF, welcome to the stream. Hope you're feeling better. So basically, this is where we're at. One race left on Rexona sponsorship deal, so I'm going to need your help to pick a new sponsor today. And um, yeah, in terms of competition, if we click on that. So yeah, round six of six of the GT3 series, round five of five of the American Stock Car series, and round four of six of the... Formula 3 Championship, um, and round, what is it, LMP4 series, we've done it, so next month we've got round 4 or 5 of the uh, LMP4 Championship, so no LMP4s immediately, so the, uh, the first races that we're going to be doing today, Jury Burry, hey, thank you, thank you, I'm going to need all the luck I can get, like I said, GT3 Championship on the line. <laughs> Stephen Coe, I bet she did. Hello, Mrs. Coe. That's actually that's quite a good rhyme. Hello, Mrs. Coe. <coughs> so, I'm going to pop a poll in chat very quickly. Because you guys get to decide what I'm going to race first. So, which series first? Now, we can either start off with, um, you know, a, a non-consequential race, basically. So, we've got Formula 3's at Daytona. And that's the road course version. So we've got not only the hairpins, but we've also got that little chicane at the final corner as well. So we've got Formula 3 at Daytona, which is not a championship decider. We've got stock cars at Bathurst. Wow, that's going to be an awesome, awesome drive. I, I <laughs> that is a championship decider, but I'm not in the championship fight. And last but not least, we've got the GT3s at Montreal, which is a championship decider. So let me put that GT3 race into perspective for you. I am seven points behind the leader of the series. And if I win the race and they finish second, we will tie on equal points. But I will take the championship win because I get three wins in the series as opposed to his two. So, you guys can uh, 
you guys can have a you know have a decision on, on what you want to see first so we've got six votes in so far and half of them basically three out of six is stock cars at bathurst and i can't blame you yet it's going to be an insane combo and that's going to be a lot of fun that's that's going to be uh well as ricardo says let's do the stock car race to warm up with and then we've got the gt3 drama race and then we can go and do the formula 3 to cool down and maybe finish on the lmp4 uh, four championship which i think is exactly the same order that i did things in on my previous stream oh no the gt3 race was third was it third or was it was it second i can't remember no it was it was stock cars and then formula 3 last time because they were both at kailami hello boggy good to see you how how are you hope you're keeping well <coughs> excuse me this this cough doesn't want to go away and yes if john miller is here in chat can someone please notify him that i have a straw oh that's that's cold Whew. but it's stinking hot here in brisbane australia at the moment so cold is what you need um yeah blink this app looks incredibly cool i mean the way it works is it uh th there's competitions taking place all the time all these different championships so you basically cycle through each month and you can sign up to these championships if you want obviously there's a registration fee there's a minimum fame requirement so you need to be a certain caliber driver to be able to register in the first place like formula one for example four hundred thousand dollar registration fee 65 driver fame and then you obviously have to either lease or buy an f1 car as well which is going to be very expensive <laughs> I've only got $353,000, and I've only got 40 fame. So how do I get more money and get more fame? Well, I do races. I do exactly what I've done. I do things like the GT uh, GT5 series. I do the GT um, GT3 series that I'm doing now, and progressively work your way up the ranks and get more money. <clears throat> Obviously, there's sponsors as well. As you can see, we're sponsored by Rexona. This is the last race on our deal with them. And if we go to the finances tab and check the sponsor deal, so the 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 arrangement that I've got with Rexona is regardless of where I finish in the race I get $1500 but if I get on the podium they give me a $12,000 bonus payment so there's quite an incentive to do well there and once this finishes then I'll get offers from three new sponsors uh, where the companies are randomized and the deals are uh, different options you'll see you'll see after this first race which well, we've got 10 votes on the board at the moment. And we've got 40% for stock cars at Bathurst, 40% for GT3 at Montreal, and 23% uh, 20 Formula 3 at Daytona. So it's currently a tie for stock cars and GT3. I think that Ricardo has got a very good point. He says, warm up with the stock car championship and then go into the season finale GT3 race at Montreal. Not that I'm trying to influence the vote, because uh, Bolt Brogan you know, is, is a big fan of democracy. And someone else has just voted for the Formula 3, which is going to make it even more tied. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I'm going to keep that vote going until we get a few more on the board, until we get a, a clear winner, because it's too close to call at the moment. It is a tie. So, that's where the sponsor's at, that's where the competition's at. Uh, what's on the cards coming up after these series finish? Because this is one thing that Bolt Brogan likes to do, is always look ahead to the future and not dwell on the past too much. And not think of all the times he's run out of fuel or thrown away a championship in the last race or, you know, made a stupid bin, all that kind of stuff. He doesn't like to dwell on those things at all. <laughs> so, we have... Oh, let's see. Let's see. Well, I mean, we could sign up for the European LMP4 series, but we're already taking part in the American LMP4 series, and that's going to get us the same driver fame and the same uh, prize money. It's it's kind of a low-level championship, you know? It's, it's not really going to serve my needs, so I don't think I'm going to sign up for that. There's no point signing up for GT5. So in this month, once we do these races, we're going to progress to the next month, and now... Oh, okay. This is interesting. This is very interesting, this. There are some good options on the board here. Would you look at that? We have... Enough driver f or, ooh. Depending on how these go, if we can get our fame up to 45, we could theoretically enter into the World Endurance Championship, the WEC. 
and we could be racing in the LMP2 or GTE category. And um, we're probably not going to get up to 55, so we're not going to be able to go into the GTM. GTM? The DTM GT3 category. We're not, not going to have the fame to do that. That's going to be too much of a jump, I'd say. We could also register for the Formula 3 World Championship, which could get our fame up to 75. But if we look at this GTE Championship, that also gets us up to 75 as well, potentially. And uh, the prize money is a ridiculous 1.25 million. <laughs> hey, Colin, good to see you. 1.25 million in prize money, whereas the Formula 3 has 250,000 in prize money. I think I know which one would be worth registering for. So let's have a look at that GTE Championship. There's Spa, nice. Montreal, nice. Snetterton, eh? Kailami, nice. Virginia, always good. And a season finale in Monaco. Wow, that is one hell of a roster. Hello, JK. Good to see ya. That's one hell of a roster. That, that's insane. Now, the LMP2 Championship, I would have thought that would be more expensive because LMP2 cars, I think, correct me if I'm wrong in chat, are LMP2 cars more expensive than GTE cars? I, I would have thought they would be. Um, and there's less popularity for that as well. So there's actually, and it's a different schedule. So I think maybe these are two different series so as opposed to the wec overall multi-class championship i think these are individual car series so this is like an lmp2 only series and this is a gte only series whereas we could probably bend the rules a bit in racing life we could run it as a multi-class race that could be interesting and then we could bump it up to say half an hour or so maybe 40 excuse me maybe 45 minute races because, uh, well, it's endurance. Maybe an hour. But then again, the whole point of this racing life career so far has been to just smash through as many rounds as possible. If we start doing one-hour races, it's going to really slow our progress down. But I think I'm going to do multi-class. We'll see. We'll leave it to a vote later in, the, uh, later in the series. Once we get there, we'll deal with it. So I think Bulk Brogan's next move... If he can get enough fame, if he can bump up his fame to 45 after finishing the GT3 and Stock Car Championships, I think that GTE might be on the cards here. I think GTE might be on the cards indeed. So we'll see how that goes. That could be epic. All right, let's check the votes out then. And it's still tied. <laughs> We've got 14 votes in. And we've got 36% for both Stock Cars and GT3s. And we've got 29% for Formula 3s. So it looks like the Formula 3s aren't going to happen. It's a two-horse race. Actually, someone else has just voted. It's now 15 votes on the board. And each one has got five votes. So it's split 33%. We literally can't decide what we want to do first today. You guys playing with me, aren't you? <laughs> you guys are having me on. You're, you're rigging this. It's 33% each. Hmm. My preferred order would be stock cars, GT3, then Formula 3. And I, I, it's too close to call. It really is too close to call. It's literally 33%. <laughs> it's you! It's your fault, Liam Murray! It's your fault, Liam Murray. Flip a coin. Okay, um... I don't actually have a coin. Uh, do I have anything I can flip? I don't, um... I don't, I don't have anything I can flip. Oh, I'm, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna have to call it, guys. End the poll. There we go. There you have it. 15 votes, 33% split on each. <laughs> oh, Blink! Oh, Blink just missed it. Blink just missed it. Blink changed from Formula 3 to Stock Cars. That's it. Decided then. We're doing Stock Cars first. So let's switch it over to Automobilist 2 mode then. So if we go to our Championships... We can see here, this is what we've got. So Formula 3, we're second in the championship, six points behind. We're on round four of six, so that's where that one's up to, but that's going to be coming later. In terms of the LMP4 championship, we're on round four of five. We're miles back in the points. Look at that. That's shocking. 27 points. we got one podium, but we're really in amongst the thick of it there. So 
you know, two races to go, we could maybe salvage a top five, perhaps? Anyway, GT3 Championship, like I've said, we are seven points behind the leader and one race to go. That's going to be an epic race. That's coming up next. But first and foremost, let's get this on the board. Stock cars. Here we go. Final round of the season at Bathurst. Now, I'm going to bump this down to 105 because that's what I was using yesterday for the stock cars when we had the epic battle with Rubens Barrichello. That felt like it was really nicely balanced, so I'm going to go with that. So we have 10 minute qualifying and a 20 minute race. 20 minutes plus one lap, by the way. Don't let me forget that plus one lap like I did at Daytona when I ran out of fuel on the last lap. That was embarrassing. <laughs> so realistically, yeah, eighth position, 49 points. One, two, we're three points behind Nelson Piquet Jr. and one point behind Ricardo Zonta. So that's who we're aiming for today. If we can finish ahead of Zonta and Piquet, we can jump up to sixth. Anything more than that, Ricardo Mauricio, Matthias Rossi, you know, they're like 13 and 15, no, no, uh, 13 and 15, 13 and uh, 16, I don't know why that was so difficult then, is that right? My brain's not, it's 16 points ahead, <coughs> so that's going to be very tricky to catch up on. No worries, Colin, will you enjoy the rest of your day, mate, and, um... Enjoy the replay. Of course, I'll catch you then, in the future. But it's now, but it's still the future when you're watching it. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, sir. Right, let's get stuck in then. We're doing stock cards at Bathurst. Season finale. PK and Zonta, there are two targets for today. If we can beat them, we'll be all right. Oi, oi, John Miller. Good to see you. If we wait for this to load. I'm going to get the headset on ready. Because that's the thing with these uh, combined qualifying and practice sessions. You don't get much time. Like I said, 10 minutes to get a lap on the board. So let's edit the setup. Let's get some of that fuel out. Let's pause that music and let's get driving. First and foremost, let's reset that VR view. Engine on. Hey, Chiba! Clutch on. Pit limiter. First gear. <laughs> the stepping keeps hassling, but for driving tips. Well, I didn't want to say anything. Okay, on pit exit. Okay, Dan, we've got nine minutes to do the business. But he's uh, been sliding into my DMs a bit more than uh, it's welcome. It's getting quite annoying, actually. Just always on Discord, that guy. What a great combo to start the uh, proceedings off today with. Stock cars at Bathurst. Cold tyres, no traction control, no ABS. Fearsome car, a uh, fearsome circuit with absolutely no margin for error. First lap out of the pits, getting used to the combo. Oh, it's a slidey thing. Good job I've done a few laps here and I'm kind of familiar with the place. It's probably the closest circuit to home in terms of bulk. Parks is only a couple of hours down the road. Hopefully the uh, local law enforcement doesn't decide to pay a visit and catch up with me. That would be most embarrassing. It's one of the reasons why I don't tend to race in Australia too much these days. You know, it kind of defeats the purpose of uh, being on the run, right. going back to your backyard, you know. Keep it steady. We're right. There we go. Got him. Uh, no, Liam. No HF8. As soon as I made that video, I had to pack it up and uh, put it back in the box and send it on to its rightful owner. I only had it for a day. Oh, sorry about that. Just hit the mic. Hey, Vouter! Good to see you.
There we go. Stock cars are very good on the brakes, it seems. They always close up on me in the braking zone. All right, seven minutes in the session. It goes so quickly, these practice qualifying sessions. Oh, sliding it through the first corner already. Already defending here. Has he got the run? I think he's got the run. This is not a great start to a qualifying lap. Still there. Let's slowly move it over. Oh, they're still there. Keep it steady. Clear left. Right side. Oh, it's dirty right. on the inside there. Wow. Big suspension damage. Okay, well, let's return to the bit box and let's get out again, shall we? That's marbles on the inside for you there. Dirty track. AI just got a much better run out of the uh, first corner. That's my own fault for sliding it around. <laughs> I see you're a man of confidence, Liam. Tactics clear. Don't cross the white line. So this is going to reduce our chances of getting a lap on the board even more. I should have just let him go, conceded the position and then followed him over the mountain instead of trying to tussle it on the inside on the dirty part of the track where there's no rubber. Obviously cold tyres again now. You have to get the car warmed up. Uh, yes, indeed they do blink. They do have push to pass, although I don't think they have them in qualifying. I think it's only in the race. I think. Okay, so the lead cars are doing 214s. That's good. That gives me kind of a reference point. Oh, big understeer there. Put the brake bias one click forwards to see if that will help out. Car is a bit taily under braking. All right, Dan. Five minutes to go. Five minutes left. I see you're a man of confidence as well, John Miller. Good stuff. Took a little chip off the front left corner there. Still getting used to this combo. It's literally the first time I've ever driven it. So I'm learning out the capabilities of the car as we go. So every lap theoretically should be quicker than the last. But when you've only got four and a half minutes to get a lap on the board, you've really got to push. Oh, that's it, Chiba. I've got flamingos on my, on, my sh on my shirt and flamingos on my socks. Obviously different flamingos for each pedal. Don't want it to get too crowded down there. Up and over the curbs. I must admit this car is kinda V8 supercar-y. It's great. It's got that delicate dance of grip that the V8 seemed to have. So it's a very fitting combo, actually. Don't wib wibble and wobble it this time. That's good. Much better drive. And we've got no traffic anywhere near us on track as well, so this is great. We can actually stick it on the racing line and do our tang. Oh, car has a little blip over the crest there. Keep it in fifth. Roll out the throttle to get, uh, roll out of the brake to get the steering on. Gradually apply the throttle, run it out to the wall on the left. Little baby lift through here. Bleed off the speed. Keep it nice and tight. Oh, a bit of wheel spin there. Again, little lift. Oh, I could have been a bit tighter to the apex there, but nice and close to the wall on the left. Over the blind crest, up into fifth. Oh, 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 wing mirror's still there. That's fine, I got away with it. That was a very light contact. But I'm definitely leaving a few tents on the table there. Oh, rear wanted to go around on me then. Don't hit the inside. Nice, through the dipper. Not nice on the exit, though. Fastest lap for Barrichello, 214.27. Forest elbow, nice and tight, get the power down. So important to get a good run onto the straight. Bit wiggly on the rear there. 
This car is an absolute... Oh, it's so good to drive. It's an absolute dream. Maybe not in terms of, like, precision this lap. But in terms of driving feel, especially with this new BMW M3 GT2 Just wheel as well. Supoib. Yeah, Rubens has gone and put it on pole. That's right, Liam. 213.7 to beat. What are we going to do? Oh, we're not going to challenge him with that, though. Across the line, it's a 215.2. I know there's time in it, and this is our last chance now. Already two tenths up after the first corner. Need to find 1.5 if I want to stick it on pole. Yeah, it was a bit of a scruffy lap, but like I said, I'm still still getting to grips with the car. So this one should be good now. Oh, it was all kinds of sideways. Didn't really lose too much time though. Ray getting loose there. Kept that one nice and tight. There we go. Much better run. Three tenths up. Sector one time is good. Don't hit the wall on the on the outside there. That's good. Half a second. Eight tenths. Nine tenths. Oh no! All kinds of wrong there. Got away with it though. Still six tenths up, but could have been a lot more. Good run on the straight, if a little bit sideways. Three quarters of a second up. This is possibly going to bump us into the top five. <laughs> this is such an awesome car to drive really got to be on it. Lots of time to be gained in the final corner here. Oh, missed that apex though. But it's still kind of just as good as my last one. Okay, don't outbreak myself here. There we go! Oh, that's much better. Fourth position. Just behind Rubens. Turns out I did a 214.2, which is kind of matching, but then someone didn't went and did a 213.8. Who was it? Zonta! Zonta went and did a 213.8. 213.7, sorry. And that... Zonta's one of the guys I need to try and finish ahead of in the championship today. <laughs> Excuse me. But I am starting ahead of Nelson Piquet Jr., so that's always nice. Only half a second off the pace, and there was definitely, most definitely half a second lost over the top of the mountain when I got all kinds of sideways there, with that slow motion oppo <coughs> Liam Murray moment that you're in about. So, fourth position's not bad on the grid, that's a good place to start, right in the thick of the action. So, before we progress, let's have a look then, and let's get some, uh, let's get some sums on the board, because we are going to be doing a 20 minute race, times that by 60 gives us 1,200 seconds. Divide that by uh, two minutes, say two minutes for two minutes 15 in race fuel. So that's what, that's 120, 135 seconds. 8.8 .8 laps, so nine laps, plus one lap for the 20 minutes is 10 laps. 10 times 4.8 on the fuel gives us 48 liters. So I reckon if we put 55, 60 in, that should get, that should safely get us home. So let's continue. That's the end of the session. B4, 20 minutes. Oh no, it's overcast. Is it going to rain at Bathurst? Oh no. <laughs> this could really mix things up. So, so what would I say? 55, 60. Let's put 60 in just to be safe. You never know. It's not going to weigh us down too much. And it's always better to be safe. 
Uh, I've run out of fuel way too many times in these things to, uh... <laughs> to be caught out on that. So, pit strategy. It does look like it's gonna rain, doesn't it? Let's have a look around the track here. That's... that's pretty epic. It says it's a dry track, but it's overcast. The ambient temperature is lower than the track temperature as well. That is quite concerning here. Yeah, I, I think I think we might rain. Oh, I think we might rain. I think it might get some rain in. So let's uh, let's check. We've got our strategy set up there. Well, what's that? Talonin, off the bat, seven ninety nine, and I haven't even done a race yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very 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 much. That's very, very generous of you. No, normally, you like to save your uh, your donations until after I've got a result on the board. So, seven ninety nine for a trip to Dan Murphy's. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, I know what that's for. Is it? Is it? Does that happen to be the price of a VB long neck by any chance? <laughs> uh, okay, advanced setup. So tire pressure is one point six one. So we need to make sure that the strategy in the tires. That's close enough. Uh, dries, 6 one let's bump them down. Doesn't actually say which compound we're changing onto there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete these, because I think AMS2 may be throwing a wobbly on me there, because it doesn't actually have a tire compound in the pit strategy. So let's create a new pit strategy, call it wet. I hate the fact that AMS2 saves your pit strategies for the entire game, regardless of which car you're in. It should really save your pit strategies and all that kind of stuff per car. That would make so much more sense. Anyway, fuel and tires, change tires, all uh, wet. Yes, let's take the fuel out of it. I don't want to take any fuel on. Let's take all the damage off because we don't want to spend 500 seconds in the pits. Just in case we do have damage. Uh, 13 seconds for a new set of wet tires. Lovely. And then, just in case it goes wet and then dry again, let's create a new strategy called dry. So we want to basically put the uh, hard slicks back on. Is there any soft slicks? No, it's only wets or hards. So, okay, that's what we want. Let's take the fuel out, because we don't want to put any fuel in and waste time in the pits. Let's uh, turn all the damage off, because we don't want to be repairing damage if we don't have to. Let's get rid of all that. Let's save. Job done. So, we now have... Well, Not bad. We now have £10. JDF, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Send some of those salt and pepper chips. Uh... I think that perhaps they might not be in the best condition by the time they arrive. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yes! Nice win, mate! JDF has also been a member for 33 months. That's not going to help with the salt and pepper chips, I'm afraid. You might try, but it's... <laughs> Unless I can guarantee an overnight service from Australia to the UK, I don't think there's much I can do, unfortunately, for you on that one. As much as I would dearly love to. Anyway, we have a race to do. We have... Not just a race, we have... <coughs> <coughs> the finale of the Stock Cars Championship. The championship that started off at Indianapolis with a magnificent second position from the back of the grid. The championship that has also had the crazy race at Daytona in the wet and the dry and the wet and the dry and then running out of fuel on the last lap. And that epic win against Rubens Barrichello last time out. This had some awesome races this series and it's going to come to a close today. We need to finish ahead of Ricardo Zonta and Nelson Piquet. We're starting in fourth, so that's a good start. So let's do this. Wish me luck, and I hope you enjoy it. 20 minutes, plus one lap. Overcast. Is it going to rain at Bathurst? Probably yes. Let's do this. V4. Okay, Dan. Be ready. Thank you, Boggy! Oh, I missed your message, Tuba. Sorry about that. Default setup for me. Thanks, Sean. Go, nail it. Oh, we got done off the line by PK there. Website. Hold 
Didn't get the run out the first corner. Try and squeeze him over to the left and pull back to the right to get some of that tasty slipstream. And we're clear on the left, so I'm going to pull it over. <clears throat> Zonta's in the lead. Right side. Oh, that's opportunistic. Nice tasty fourth position here. Just defend that inside, nice and careful on the brakes. Don't want to rear-end anybody. And if I hold the inside, it should defend the position. Oh, a bit wide there, though. Tyre's still coming up to temperature. Track is a bit colder than qualifying, though. Oh, stay out the wall on the right. Kinds of sideways there. Oh, big wheel spin on the exit. Had to straighten up the steering there to try and avoid the car going round. Wow, it's very skatey. Very skatey. Just need to calm it down a bit. We're in a comfortable fourth here. We've got a second behind and a second ahead. He's defending fresh air on the right, but I'm going to follow in that slipstream here. Gonna have a bit more top speed here, so dial that braking zone back a bit. Do the chase. Gained a bit of time back there. Gap's now half a second. Right. Oh, the leaders are fighting. On your left. Clear left. Oh, hell of a dive from PK behind there. Wow. Gonna sort that brake bias one click to the front again. Does look very cloudy, doesn't it? Maybe it's just an overcast kind of day here on the mountain. I'm not exactly sure on the... Uh, push to pass situation, but I'm going to use one on Comrod straight next time, I think. Still holding on. Not dropping back too far from the leaders here, which is good. Still in fighting distance. Had to get out of it big time there. Caught the caught the bumper on gaps going straight towards the wall. Wow. So tr tricky over the top of the hill, the car just goes so light. Need to break a bit early for those corners. Let's do push to pass. I think I pressed it. There's no pop up on the dash. That zero yellow. I think that is the push to pass remaining. I'm not sure. Oh no, we're definitely we're definitely gaining here. Zonto is now in the lead. We're already a quarter of the way through the race. The leader's just done a 214.86. The guy ahead's lap time is up 214.47. That lap time was 214.38. Okay. I feel like I should be able to break later there. But every time I try, it goes wide at the apex and locks up the rears. So the AI have definitely got an advantage on grip there. Ba oh, Barrichello's taken the lead from Zonta. Look at this. Wide line, get the power down. Oh, 
One second to the lead. Top five covered by one and a half. This is epic. Wow. Clouds definitely look like they're getting greyer. Time to get defensive, mate. Holy moly. Just getting our speed at different parts of the track here completely. And they're definitely holding each other up with the ba with the battling as well. All right, dial it back then. Di uh, bulk. Focus on the exit, especially this first elbow coming up now. It's all about that run on the straight. There we go. Just can't quite keep up over the mountain. We're definitely gaining here on the straight. Wow, massive effect from the slipstream. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Just need to time them. Time the run to perfection. This AI have definitely got much more low level grip than I have. Uh, slow speed grip, sorry. Mechanical grip. They can just pull through these two corners and the hairpin much better than I can. But this is good though. We're closing. We're closing and we're not even on push to pass here. Just give him some space. Great run. Great run. Let's go up the inside. Still there. Clear, clear to the right. Got him. Nice move, mate. That's third. Next car is Zonta. And let's stick with him. If we can stick with him over the mountain here, we can get him coming down the straight. we go. We've dropped uh, Salas behind a bit. Zonta and Barrichello got a great run off the hairpin though. Oh, I'm going to have to... Tuck back in. Oh, just overshot the apex there. So much more speed in the slipstream. You just got to brake so much earlier. You can't brake where you normally brake. Otherwise, you'd be sailing off into the gravel. Okay, down. Keep on the this is good. This is good. We're in a much better position now. That was a 214.54. Oh, it's so lively. I love this car. Rubens straight to the inside again. Zonta's going to have to go the long way around the outside if they slow each other down. This is where I got someone last time. I just need to get a good exit. Didn't really get a good exit there. Bogged it down a bit. Tenth down on my previous efforts. And looks like the clouds are just staying constant. They're not really getting darker at the moment. There's no increase on the cloud cover. It's just overcast. Track temp is staying consistent as well. It 
So hopefully the rain stays away. That's a bit of corrective action there. A little bit more corrective action. Lock the rears under braking. Wow. Really lost my run there. They might be on push to pass. They're pulling away a bit. But we're doing what we need to do to get ahead of PK in the championship. He's falling back. Just need to try and finish ahead of Zonta. Barrichello would be a bonus. Someone's decided to take out the 100 metre marker there on the final corner. That lap was out 215.03. What's up, Skip? Oh, that was turn one, not turn two. Sorry, Liam. Look at this, Rubens is defending again. We're a little bit further back now, so we've got more visibility on the apex. What's up, Skip? Nice, great run there. Not going to be able to do anything with it. They're a little bit too far back to make our move that we made before. Get tucked in. Power down on exit. Oh, slightest of grazes on the left-hand side there, but I think we got away with it. The wind mirror is still hanging on. Oh, nowhere to go there, Dan. It's got so much more speed in the slow corners. They always get a much better run onto the straight than I do. And they're pulling away this time. They must be on push to pads as well now. Only seven minutes to go in the race. Oh, Zonta had to get on the brakes then. Rubens chopped him off. How good does this car sound? In fact, I'm going to go in for a quiet lap next time around. Turn the volume up, put your headphones on, have a listen to this, because I don't think I've really commented on the sound of this stock car before. It sounds insane. Oh, have a listen. Your lap time was 2.14.62. Okay, Dan, lap times are pretty consistent. How good does that sound? Wow, good job Reza Studios. That's five minutes to go, come on, keep it together. We'll be on the podium here. Nice, that's the best run I've had out of that corner. Okay, Dan, you've got half your fuel left. 
But they still seem to pull away from me in the second stage. Closing up here though. Zonta's getting on the brakes again. Hey Olaf! Oh, side by side, this could be an opportunity. They're both slow. So am I. Four and a half minutes to go. Wow, what a race. I'm driving the socks off this thing. I'm not holding back. I'm literally... I'm doing my damnedest here. And the AI are matching me so well. This is the perfect setting. In terms of AI difficulty here. Got a nice gap behind as well. 4.5. PK is dropping down the order even further. So it's going to seal our jump on him in the standings. Just need to get Zonta. This looks very promising. This looks very promising. He's on the curb. He's high on the curb. Let's get the run out. Ah, oh, can't quite get it. <laughs> exactly, Sean. All the action is in front today. Oh, it blocks me on the exit there. Stay close on the straight. Terrible corner. I had a... I thought I had a bit of an overlap there and the rear also got loose on me as well. I didn't want to spin it, so I thought I'd just open up the steering a bit. Stay close. Wait for him to make a mistake. Just need to try something a little bit extra somehow. Just to get these guys. to try something a bit adventurous. Not with Barrichello, just with Zonta. Two minutes to go. Two minutes. Oh, I can't get close enough to punt them even, Steve. That's the problem. <laughs> like, if I could get a little bit closer, I could try the bump and run. Oh, it's two to go, by the way, Liam. Because when the clock hits zero, it's another lap. It's 20 minutes plus one lap. It's not over yet. We get one more shot after this. This looks good. This looks good. All right. Still there. To the right. Oh, I couldn't make it stick. Couldn't make it stick. Expertly defended by Zonta there. Car right. Clear to the right. Right, need to nail this herpin. Good enough. It's the closest I've been for a while. I do always tend to catch at the end of the straight here. This could be promising by the time we get to the chase. Wow. Massive gap behind as well. It's forced us to the outside. Still there. Still there. Clear to the left. 
They just got so much more slow speed grip. Last lap. Bring it on home. We're currently setting the pace. That lap time was 2.14. Car right. Still there. Clear right. On your right. Clear right. Whoa! Right side. Hold your line. Oh! <laughs> got him! I think I've saved the push to pass for that. I have, yep. Yeah. Clear right. We got him! We got him! Good stuff. Keep it coming. Alright, let's go and get Rubens. We got three quarters of a lap to get Rubens. Oh, wide. Or left. Clear to the left. Oh, seven tenths back. It's not looking likely. Oh, he's not had a good run through there, though. For the win on the last lap. Right, need to nail this. Use that push to pass. Here we go. Again, that slipstream. I think I saved the push to pass. Yes. Half a second. Okay, down. Four tenths. He's defending. He's defend. Oh, he's defending the wrong way. On your left. Oh. Still there. Hold your line. Still there. Clear left. Ah. Didn't, just couldn't quite make it stick. One chance to go. Holy dive up the inside. Car right. Clear right. You're clear. Ah, oh, couldn't make it stick, but managed to defend from the center. What a race. <laughs> what a race. What an end to the season. That was, that was awesome. Fantastic AI. That 105 is the perfect setting for me in stock cars at Bathurst. Hey James! Thanks John! Right side. Ooh, thanks Saladin! What a race! Just couldn't quite get Rubens at the end there. But fourth to second. We managed to finish ahead of Zonta. Managed to finish ahead of a PK, which are our two major rivals in the championship. Thanks Tuba! Thanks Sean! Boggy Vin uh, Vince! Sorry, not Vince! Vaughn! Vince Vaughn! Vaughn! <laughs> Thank you, Vaughn. Blink! Talonin! Wow! Okay. Oh, Liam, I think I might need one as well. Let's uh, skip the cooldown lap. Left side. Clear on the left. And let's get the official confirmation of results. Congratulations on the win to Rubens Barrichello. I think that might actually seal him the championship points. Managed to get a second place, though. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, sir. Ricardo Zonta in third. Nelson Piquet all the way down in eighth. Wow. What a race. Thank you, Mark. So let's continue to the points. So Rubens gets 20 for that. Oh, I don't know if that will be enough to beat Zonta. I only got two points on him there. Let's have a look. Let's see. Did we manage to beat Zonta in the championship? Yes! Oh, would you look at that as well? Right. Look at the Clear points. Right. Look at the points. We finished on 69 points. It's only 6th in the championship standings, but I think that is the uh, the take-home from this championship. 69 points. <laughs> Very nice indeed, Vaughn. Or should I say Vince? Still there. Still there. Uh, there we go. <laughs> what a race what? Sticky would like what? those numbers indeed So <coughs> Started in fourth Finished in second And overall championship was Sixth place So I will uh, Quit back to the menu And we're going to go and put these, these numbers into racing life now So let me just load up racing life And uh, yeah Let's get this on Let's get this show on the road 
And I got my podium bonus as well. Exactly, Sean. I didn't even think about that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Right. Advance. So that was the American Stock Car Series at Bathurst. So press start. Qualification result was four. Race result was two. Championship result was six. So, I mean, out of... I think it was... How many people were in that series? Out of 24 people. Oh, wow. Let me just show you something quickly, by the way. Look at that. Felipe Massa finished in last. It's okay, Felipe, baby. Stay cool. Stay cool. <laughs> so, okay, let's get our results in, shall we say. Uh, qualification result four, race result two, championship result uh, six. Let's finish this stock car series and let's see what we get. So, race result fame earned zero. Championship fame earned zero. Uh, because I think we've maybe maxed out our fame in this championship. I think the maximum fame limit in the stock car series is like 35 and I'm already at 40. So there's, I'm not getting any benefits, but I don't know if you can see that there. We earned $13,500 in sponsor money and we earned $1,204. So $1,024. $124,000 and $3 in champ... I don't know why that was so hard to say. In championship prize money. So that's not a bad little earner, that one. And that wraps up the stock car series. So let's continue. And look at that. $491,000. Excellent stuff. That's that's what we like to see. M maths. It's not so much maths, John. It's... it's um pronunciation is what was getting me then. I just couldn't work out the logical order to say the numbers into, you know, make sense in a literal way. I think I need a drink. Well, Liam Murray's on the beer. I've got the water for now, but I will be getting a beer later. Uh, the Bank of Bulk offers 0% interest, Liam. How does that sound? <laughs> hey, Rangy, good to see you. Alright, so... What this now means is if we go back to the competition page, we are either going to be racing Formula 3, which is round 4 of 6, or we're going on to the big race of the stream, the big race of the day, which is GT3s at Montreal. Now, I'm going to put a poll up just for posterity's sake. Actually, no, I'm not going to put a poll up. Yes, I am going to put a poll up, because I've also got to put a poll up for sponsors. I need a new sponsor as well. So while we're deciding the race, I can run through the sponsor details, and we can get something sorted that way. So, which series next? Are we going to have Formula 3 at Daytona's, or are we going to have GT3's at Montreal? Now, Montreal is the season finale. I'm seven points behind the leader. So if I win the race and they finish second, we'll be on equal points. But I will take the championship on count back because I'll have three wins to their two. Formula 3 is round four of six. It's not a season finale, but it's getting there, I suppose. So it's just another race. Do you guys want to do the Formula 3 first and then do the GT3 race afterwards? You want to basically build it up even more? Or do you just want to get stuck straight into the season finale of the GT3 series right now? It's your choice. Get the polls going in chat. And it's uh, two votes, 100% GT3. I think it's going to be pretty much GT3 <coughs> landslide. Because that's going to be an epic race. But y you guys can decide whether we do it now or we do it later. Because we're definitely going to be doing it this stream. Right. We have a sponsor to pick, people. We have a sponsor to pick. Okay. Okay. Here's our deals. And these deals are a lot more lucrative than the last deals that I've had. So, sponsor one, Adidas. They will pay me $10,000 straight away to sign. They'll give me $6,000 a race. And as long as I don't DNF, they'll give me another $3,000. So it's pretty much $9,000 guaranteed every race for five races. 
So that's what, uh, 45,000, 55,000 dollars all up. In the bank, guaranteed, 100%, unless I DNF a race, uh, run out of fuel, have terminal damage in a crash. So that's, that's easy money, that's easy bank. Sponsor number two, Citrix. A bit more risk involved in this one, but not too much risk. They will give me $30,000 immediately to sign up, and basically, you know, that that's it. $30,000, boom. Job done. Every race they'll give me $3,300. And if I finish in the top 10, they'll also give me $7,500. So that is $10,800 each race, provided I don't do terribly. And for seven races. So that's like 70, that's like 100,000 kind of guaranteed. We'll see how we go. It's kind of guaranteed. Whereas. This sponsor here, Gazprom. I think it's Gazprom, is it? We had this offer earlier in our in our career, but we turned them down because they were Russian. They'll give me sixty thousand immediately. Wow, what a signing bonus! And then the deal is actually the same one that I had with Rexona. It's fifteen hundred a race, and if I finish on the podium, I get twelve thousand. So. Basically, do I want to continue the deal I just had with Rexona, but only sign it with Gazprom instead? Or should we go with Citrix? So, got the votes in. We've got 17 votes on the board for the next race. And it's look it looks like 59% in favor of... 59% in favor of doing GT3s. No, actually, 18 votes on the board. 61% in favor of doing GT3s at Montreal. Let's end that right now. We're doing GT3s at Montreal next, guys. That's what we're doing. Season finale of the GT3 series. It's going to be... I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this race for two days. Because that's how long it was since my last stream, obviously. So let's put a new poll in chat. Just decisions coming thick and fast at you today, guys. Which sponsor... Should we have added S? Should we have Citrix? Or should we have Gazprom? Let democracy manifest itself into this decision. So new vote is now up in chat, by the way. New vote is up in chat. Talonin thinks that Citrix is a good choice. Is he going to put his money where his mouth is? I want to say money. I mean, like, his vote. Uh, Rangy also thinks that um, Citrix is good value. Hey, Hannah Scott, welcome to the stream. Carrots all round for everybody. Good to see you again. I hope you're keeping all right. I hope you're looking after yourself. Wow, look at that vote. <laughs> 13 votes in so far. 85% in favor of Citrix. I mean, we're not even going to entertain the Adidas deal because that's just like... You know, it's, uh, I mean, Adidas is a prestige brand. And like Liam Murray said, Citrix do have known vulnerabilities, but the money, the money speaks for itself. Liam Murray is voting for Gazprom. Interesting. Because it's a good deal. And you just, you know, take the money, no questions asked. <laughs> Adidas is for Honda drivers. Okay, Boggy, understood. Right, well, we got 16 votes on the board, and it's 88% in favor of Citrix. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, so let's end that poll. We're going to sign with Citrix. Thank you for your decision on that one. That was a great, that was a great poll. That was a very decisive poll. Sorry, Liam, <laughs> but democracy has spoken massively here. 87%, sorry, should I say. So let's sign with Citrix. Boom, there we go. So just to remind you, for the next seven races, I get $3,300 guaranteed, and provided I finish in the top 10, 7,500 as well. That sounds like a good deal. So there we go. Right then. Let's get back to AMS2. Because we have got a championship to decide here. And uh, we can't really... No, there's no point keeping that stuck car on the board, really. <coughs> <laughs> Liam. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that stuck car is done and dusted. Lovely stuff. Right, GT3 series. 
this this is the one where the silverware could be landing on the shelf for bulk brogan we've had a race at bathurst we've had a race at interlagos we've had a race at daytona suzuka and virginia international raceway for every race this season apart from bathurst it's been mixed weather conditions it's either rained and then dried out or it's been dry and then it's got wet and then dried out again so i don't think that this is going to be any different here at montreal i don't think it's gonna be any different whatsoever so i'm expecting mixed conditions today especially straight from the outset in qualifying so i'm going to be getting out there and getting a lap on the board asap so qualifying is going to be 15 minutes the race is going to be half an hour if you look at the points bulk brogan is sitting nice and neat and tidy here in third place on 67 points with two wins I am two points behind Riccardo Mauricio and seven points behind Marco Kowalski. Now we're using the Formula One scoring system for this championship. So 25 points for a win and 18 points for second. So that's a seven point difference. So if I win the race and Kowalski comes in second, I'm going to be on equal points with him. We're both going to be on uh, so it's 90, 99 points. However, you can see that I've got two wins, and Kowalski's got two wins. So if I win the race and he finishes second, we'll be on equal points, but I'm going to be on three wins. So this could get very interesting indeed. Okay, that's, that's what we're dealing with here. So let's get stuck straight in then. Let's load up our GT3 at Montreal session, and let's get a championship on the board current world record in these GT3s is a 130.935. I don't know what time I'm going to set because I've never driven this combo before. I've driven this car a lot, obviously over the course of this uh, racing life season, and I've driven at Montreal a few times in AMS2. In fact, I think it was one of the first ever videos I did in AMS2 was the V8 supercars. Oh, it's, it's raining already! It's already raining in qualifying! Let's get some wet tires on. And let's just go driving. Let's just tank it. On, say, like 30 litres. 11 laps, that should do it. Wow, track wetness is soaked. This is not going to go well. <laughs> right. Alright, Dan. Light rain now. Looks like it's getting better. Right, here we go then, guys. Let's get straight out into qualifying. Looks like it stopped raining. Looks like you're clear on the pit exit. You've got yep. 40 minutes to get a decent lap in. Best of luck indeed, Hannah. You break some cold. Let's get some heat. The track temps increasing. It's now 30 Celsius. Saying that, it was raining. It's not raining anymore. Got a bit of a drying line already. <coughs> Did a Sebastian Vettel. Lots of moisture at the apex there. <laughs> Maybe if I do another race after this one, Potato. Air temperature's decreasing. It's down three Celsius. At Montreal, I can go into the Wall of Champions, but not today. Definitely not today. Right. Tires don't seem to be heating up too much. Pick a breaking point where we're going to break this try here. That's a bit early. Oh, little tap on the outside. We've done it early. Get out of the way. There's a lot of moisture collecting around the curbs here. The track temperature is decreasing. It's now 28 Celsius. It's 
very tricky conditions here. Looks like it's starting to get a bit darker. A few clouds rolling in. <laughs> Very tree boggy. Wow, those puddles on the inside make it so tricky. Did he say one? It's like literally almost freezing. I mean, track temp's only 13. Very cold track. Ain't, ain't gonna dry out anytime soon. It's a great circuit, though. Currently on the leaderboard top is a 142.1. That puts us in third. That's quite surprising. I wasn't expecting to be that far at the board. Each lap is going to be faster than the last, I think. Saying that, it's starting to rain a bit more now. Okay, down. It's starting to drizzle. Rain percentage is now up at 15%. those wipers on. Slide it out. Less than a tenth away from our best. Sector 2 is 0.9 off the pace. Got light right here. It's clearing up. There's a good exit off the hairpin. Oh, the weather's superb, isn't it, Jasper? It really is. Okay, Dan, it's stopped raining. It's dry at this part of the track. Oh. I just hit the moisture on the inside, and that sent it wide. All dry. And McLaren's now fighting with me again. All dry. Clear left. Okay, sector 2 is 0.9 off the pace. Oh, too wide there as well. Oh! Clear away. Just can't turn in on me, mate. Still holding on to third place on the standings, though. Eight minutes left in qualifying. This is just practice now. This is just to get used to the track conditions. Oh! There's a bit of drizzle starting. Standing water is going to be a nightmare here in the race. It looks absolutely stunning. I'm losing too much time with this guy. Go. Go, go, go. This lap's already a right off anyway. Sector 2 is 3.8 off the pace. The brake temperatures are okay. I definitely think the rain is getting heavier though. I don't think that many people will be able to improve their time in these conditions. It's definitely getting moister. Much more standing water there. You can see. The trash control starting to kick in.
with those little rivers running across the circuit. Sector 3 is 3.3 seconds off the pace. Just drizzling now. Looks like it'll stop soon. Yep, front tyres are dead. In terms of temperature, they're so cold. Oh, all the tyres are cold. Just can't get anywhere near my previous times. Oh, big moisture on the inside there. Just push the car wide. Is this what you're saying before, Bose Beaver? About lowering the pressures, is that going to help with the tyres? I just need to get some more temperature into them. I'm really not familiar with the way AMS2 works in terms of pressures. It's different in every sim, but you l you'd lower the pressures to increase the temperature, right? Air temp's falling. It's now minus 4 Celsius. <laughs> it's minus 4 Celsius, guys! It's literally freezing cold! Look at the ambient temperature, it's 9! We got... It's literally freezing! And I'm so glad I got that lap on the board before. Although, the guy ahead of me... ...is Mauricio, my championship rival. The guy that I need to be finishing ahead of. I mean, it might snow. I haven't personally experienced snow yet, but I know it's definitely an option. That's five minutes to go. Five minutes. Have to avoid that water. Sector one is 1.7 seconds off the pace. Hopefully, we're getting all of the varial weather. Weather, the varial weather. Third time lucky. Variable weather out of the way in qualifying. And the race is nice and dry, although I haven't done a single dry lap practice, so if the, the race is dry, I'm going to be learning as I go. Progressively feed that throttle in. 4.3 seconds down on my best. I'm not going to be beating any times here. Seems to be increasing. But no one else will be by the looks of things, so this is just practice. Look at the TC kicking in there over the puddles. Temp rising. It's now minus one Celsius. What's up, Yogi? <laughs> hey, HW. Sector three is one point seven off the pace. This it's not raining so heavily now. It seems to be improving. There's just no way of avoiding that water. It's right on the racing line on the inside. If you drive through it, it just pushes the car to the outside. You lose all of your grip. Whereas if you try and drive around it, you're that wide, you're just losing so much time anyway. Ooh! Big aquaplane there. Sector 1 is 3.2 off the pace. I wonder why they call it aquaplaning. Like, if you take the water out of it, and you, like, just slip over in normal life, is it just called planing? Like, if you lose grip on... If you lose grip in a fighter jet, is it called aeroplaning? As opposed to aquaplaning on the water? I don't know. Best suggestions in chat. Hey, Raphael, good to see ya! Sector 
Okay, so there's a bit of a trying line starting to form here. That's two minutes left. Two minutes. So we're going to get one more lap on the board after this. Might be able to improve it if if it's dry. Depends on these puddles. Oh. Increasing. It's now 1 Celsius. <laughs> We're above zero. Track temperature's rising. It's now 13 Celsius. Short shift into seconds. Oh, I got held up massively though. Guy on that! Whoa! Hit the standing water there. Lance Stroll would be proud. <laughs> Just return to the pit box. You're locking your ears a lot. Ah, <sighs> so there we go. Third position. Yeah, that was a bin indeed. And here the wipers going. So we got 36 seconds left in the qualifying session, currently on the grid in third. Everybody else is out on track, but nobody is improving. Oh, Raphael, the first race of the stream was absolutely superb. Uh, although you're probably not watching live anymore, you probably already skipped back, in which case you'll see this message in about an hour. <laughs> seen a few spots of rain. Seems to be increasing. That's a very good point, Hannah. Because if it's a near miss, doesn't that indicate that it wasn't a miss? Proper rain now. Looks like it's getting harder. Right, there we go. End of the qualifying session. We are officially in third position. And for, yeah, for some reason, AMS2 thinks that Bulk Brogan is German, yeah? I mean, I know I, know I have a a big European and, and German following. Hello to all, all the Germans in chat, great to see you. But uh, yeah, Buck Brogan is, is definitely repping one for the team there. Um, our championship rivals, let's have a look. Ricardo Mauricio is the guy we're fighting for the lead of the championship. We need to win the race. And he needs to finish second. Marco Kowalski, who is only two points ahead of us in the championship, qualified in 19th. So unless he has an absolute stonker of a race, he's out of contention for this. So it's literally between myself and Mauricio. So Felipe Fraga has put it on pole position. And... Yeah, Ricardo's one spot ahead of us. So if I win the race, Mauricio can't win the championship because even if he finishes second we're on equal points and i have one more win than him if i finish in second i'll get 18 points if i finish in second i need to score seven more points than him so it's 18 15 12 if i finish in second he needs to finish in fifth ricardo mauricio needs to finish in fifth Variant Claw Whiskey One, good to see you. Fantastic name. I'm not sure if you saw that on stream the other, the other day when you subscribed and I saw that pop up, but awesome. I love that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. So, basic summary of the race. I need to win, and I can guarantee the championship. If I finish second, Mauricio has to finish fifth or lower. Okay. Let's continue to race one. Let's see what kind of weather we've got. 30 minutes. P3. Okay, it's overcast. But the track is moist. Oh, this is tricky. This is going to be tricky. The track temperature is only 12. So if it doesn't... It's not going to dry up quickly. This is such a tricky decision. 
wets or dries. If we go on dries, then it could be a good it could be a good move if the track dries up and it doesn't rain. However, if it does rain, we're going to have to switch to wets. Wets might be the better option if the track is damp. Because it's not going to dry quickly and also it could rain. Mm. What do you think, guys? What do you think? I'm going to get rid of these strategies. And I'm going to put new ones in. So, wet strategy is change all tires. Don't put any fuel in. And we're going to change it to wets. And I'm going to drop the pressures. One, two, three. Four. I'm going to drop them down to 170. That should help a little bit. Unless I need to do lower than that. What do you reckon, guys? Drop them down 0.1. And turn the damage off. So damage, nope, nope, nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Cool. Save. And we want to do another strategy where we have dry tyres. Just in case we start on wets and change the dries. So dry tyres. Fuel and tyres. Nope, don't want any fuel put in. Change all tyres, go on to the soft slicks, the higher pressures, excellent. Let's get rid of all the damage. Nope, 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 no, nope, no, nope, nope. and save. Job done. Rangy says dry. Liam Murray says dry. <laughs> Normally I would go for dry tyres as well. It's just that it looks like it's going to absolutely pour it down. Look at the sky. And the track temperature is not conducive to a drying track either. Let's see. Ah, uh, saying that, the track does look pretty dry, actually. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think dry ties is the way to go. So I'm going to select wet strategy by default. And I'm going to go on dry ties. I'm going to check my fuel as well now. So we have... I don't know what a dry lap time is. So if we've got 30 minutes times 60 seconds, we're doing 1,800 1, seconds. Divide that by... Uh, what lap time was pole? Was 150? So let's say 145. So that would be 60 plus 45, 105. Say 17 laps. Let's say 20 laps just to be safe. And what fuel was I using? Oh, it's gone off the top of the board. But if I put 20 laps worth of fuel in, that should be set. 50 litres... I might go 60 just to be safe. It's not gonna it's not gonna weigh me down too much if I put too much fuel in. It's always best to be safe. I can 60 60 liters could be a good bet. And if I need more fuel if I need more fuel, then I can put some in when I inevitably come into the pits to change tires. So here we go guys. This is it! This is the Bolt Brogan GT3 Championship Decider, starting in third. If I win, it's my title no matter what happens. If I finish second, Ricardo Riccio needs to finish fifth. Uh, okay, before I start the race, I'm getting a message from Very Important Potato to read his essay. Uh, the most likely origin of the word aquaplaning is a combination of the word aqua in Latin for water and the English word plane. Plane could be because of plane like aeroplane but it could also refer to the flat surface that allows it to float like it does in the word aeroplane as the water creates a flat surface therefore allowing the floating that makes sense to me <laughs> and on that note let's go racing 30 minutes wish me luck 30 minutes be ready Dry tyres on a moist track. Green, green, green. And we're away! This is a learning experience. I've never driven a, on a dry track here. It's, it's all new. What side? Oh, Mauricio's up into the lead! There. Keep it steady. We're left. Oh, down to third. That wasn't part of the plan.
Mauricio doing everything he needs to do. Let's put one hand on the trophy. Oh, terrible exit out of that corner there. I'm going to have to defend to the inside. Right side. No, you don't, mate. Yep, still finding my feet here. Working out the limits of the track. In dry conditions. In cold, dry conditions. Need a bit less TC. It's bogging down a bit too much out of the slow speed stuff. Can't let Mauricio get too far away here. I reacted to those brake lights, and I was full on the brakes. I just don't think they slowed down at their full capacity in the Mercedes there. Very harmless. Tap into the rear. Bit wide on exit. Looks like the sun is starting to go down here at Montreal as well. Look at that sunset. That's beautiful. Oh, Mauricio's pulling away a bit here. Need to find some pace. Really getting aggressive with those curbs. Track temp's only 11 degrees as well, so the tyres definitely aren't overheating. Gap to the leader, 3.1 seconds now. This ain't good. Adds very cheeky over the kerbs there. I feel like the suspension can take it. I want Fraga to get stuck in. If he can start fighting ahead, I could slow them both down and bring them back to me. That's what I need. Michael Johansson and the BMW behind ain't going anywhere either. Need to brake earlier and turn in earlier for turn one. I've lost time the consecutive laps now. Very aggressive over the curbs. Come on, don't make it easy for him. Make him go the long way around. Got cold tires, we need to get some heat into them. Big slide on the rear there. Just haven't quite got the pace at the moment, it seems. <laughs> oh, that was so sketchy over the curbs. Right, brake earlier, turn in earlier. Need to straight line. Your last lap time was at 136.24. The track temperature is increasing. It's now 27 Celsius. Much better through there. Much better. Oh, that wasn't. Oh, he's going to be all over me. Kind of matching the leader's pace a bit now. 
They're in the 36 ones, I'm doing 36 twos. Getting defensive. Looks like Frog is getting closer up ahead as well. Right side. Hold your line. Oh, there's a tap from Johansson then. Still there. Clear right. Much better drive than the Beamer though. He's right in my wheel tracks. Got a gap back to fifth though. That's good. So I just, I just need to get rid of this guy. That was way too much curb. But I had to cover the inside because he was going for it there. Maybe stick it in second for turn two. Maybe keep it in second instead of going down to first. Maybe I don't need to go down to first. Gap two, Johansson behind is increasing. It's now not protect. Okay, got some more pace on this lap. Half a second up on my best so far. Feel like I'm starting to get to grips with this now. Track temps increased as well, which is helping the tires. Less of a monster over the curbs, six cents up. Like I said at the start of the race, I haven't done any dry laps in any practice session here or qualifying session. It's all been in the wet, so I'm learning as we go, learning where the limits of grips are in the middle of the race. And now on lap five. As long as I can stay in touch, once I start to get more familiar, hopefully the race will come back to me. Okay, that's good. That's my best lap of the race so far by a while. I think it might even be the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, second gear definitely better there. Second gear is definitely better for turn one. What do you reckon, guys? How are our chances looking? Any tips? Any rangy tips from the from the gallery? Brake bias, that kind of thing. How does it look to you, sir, the resident engineer? Dire. <laughs> Thank you, potato. I love your uh, optimism. Oh, slight tap on the wall on the outside there. Beware of Groundhog Sector 2. Will do, Liam. All the animals are coming out to play today, hey? Okay, we're now in slipstream range of Fraga. Okay, TC now down at 2. Quickest right now, that lap was a. All right, clear, clear to the right. Sector two is 0 0.5 off the pace. Definitely getting some more pace now. That's 20 minutes to go, 20 minutes. Both closing up on the leader. Looks like the risk of rain has abated. So dry tires were definitely the right decision. Well, saying that, air temperature is now at minus one, even though the track temps at 25. So that asphalt is definitely retaining that heat. Ah, 
That is a good point, Steve. They may have started on wets indeed. Although the brakes are getting a bit hot, but that's just Montreal things. They always do. Second down on my best so far. Thankfully, we've dropped that BMW behind us. Michael Johansson's dropped back a bit. Bit of breathing space. Nice slipstream here. Really starting to reel him in. Just be careful on the brakes, though. Because this is where we tapped him before, hey? Great run. Here we go. Come on, nail him already. On your right. Still there. Clear to the right. What time was that? Boy, you're right. Oh, he's made a mistake! Mauricio's made a mistake up at the lead of the race! They're fighting! It's on! This is it! This is the battle that we're after! Just ran it wide on the exit of turn one there. Braga's all over him. Johansson's getting stuck in behind as well. He's caught up too. Oh, it's all coming back together. The pack is converging. Something just fell over and on the on the shelf. I think the trophy. I think the top fell off of Olaf's trophy again. Scared the life out of me. <laughs> All right, we'll do Olaf. Good one. He went defensive on the inside. Half a second to the leader. Your lap time was 136.62. The track temperature is falling. It's now 24 Celsius. Look at this for a fight. This is epic. Remember, I need to finish ahead of Mauricio. I need to win the race to win the championship. Doesn't matter what he does, if I win, the title is mine. If I finish second, he has to finish fifth. Although, there's a bit of a gap back down to fifth now, though. Oh, wide. So, realistically, I have to win the race to win the championship. So, it's all about maximum attack, but sensible attack here. Mauricio's going defensive. Got another tap from Johansson behind then. He's getting stuck back into it. I mean, there is another option, Potato. The dirty option. Oh, they're defending. Right side. Clear right. Maximize those curbs. Try and get the run on this side now. That gap's going to disappear. Far away. Time was 1.36. Still there. Hold it tight. Got him. Up to second. Two is zero point three four off the pace. Well done, good pass. We're up to second. Right. This is for the championship now. This is literally for the championship. A direct fight for the win. Fifteen minutes left. Get the man. Stay on it. On your way. We're aware. We're halfway home. We're okay on fuel. Far bit wiggly. Right. Hold your line. Clear right. Had to defend the inside a bit there. That Merc is so good on the brakes. He's on the track, forced him to find the gap. 
On your right. Oh. To the right. I got a tap. We're over halfway into the race now. What an epic race as well. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If so, well, you don't need to remind you what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. This suspension is taking an absolute beating. Got a good run here. Looking good here. Far right. Hold your line. Clear right. P2. That lap was a 136.42. But this is Porsche versus Porsche. We have the same strengths and weaknesses. Although Mauricio has shown signs of weaknesses so far in this race. Made a wobble at turn one earlier on against Fraga. I'm hoping he's going to make another wobble against me. The, the AI do have a lot more grip coming out of that second chicane though. That Mercedes is just making me so nervous in the brakes. And that beam is not far behind in fourth as well. Focus on your exits. Oh, they're getting stuck in behind. Excellent. Breathing space. That would have been a risky move into the chicane. Left side. Never worked on the inside so far. I'm going to try the outside here. Clear left. You're in the lead. That lap time was 136.33. We did it. We're in the lead of the race. And he's run wide behind as well. This is now mine to defend. Have to defend this. This is for the championship. It's time to run away, like John Miller says. You've got cold front tyres. Right side. It's got the run on me there, though. You're clear. On your right. Clear right. You're clear. Try the dive. I'm going to have to defend into the hairpin here. I'm going to keep it to the right hand side. Oh, it's like Johansson got stuck in. Johansson's getting stuck in with Mauricio now. Those two are fighting. They really slowed each other down on the exit. Ten minutes to go. Uh, two thirds of the way home, Sean. All right, quiet lap time. That last lap was at 136.87. Got to get a solid lap on the board. Right get some breathing space here. So time to focus. There. Saying that. He's got an epic run out of turn one. He's right there. He backs out of it wisely, though. Gives me the space. Okay, quiet lap starts now. Left side. Hold your line. Clear left. Now, that's the right. Quiet lap ends now. So much more grip around the outside. Okay, it's back on again. We've got a fight on our hands here. He doesn't want to give it up. And why would he? This is for the championship. Far right, clear right. <laughs> Were you really counting, Hannah? Good 
This is risky. This is risky. Still there. Clear left. They're just so much better on the brakes. Jezza, welcome back. Oh. Far left. Hold your line. Clear left. B2. Clear left. You've just done a 136.72. Oh, no! Your outside track limits there. On your right. Clear right. On your left. Still there. Oh, got up on the marbles, right. got onto the grass. Air temps rising, it's now. Far left. Hold your line. Keep it steady. Keep it steady. Rewind. You're in the middle. Woo! Clear to the right. Clear. Clear all around. Yeah, I'm kind of on the limit of brakes here, potato. Any more and it just it's too late into the corners. Right, this isn't good. Gap to Mauricio is now 1.9. That was a terrible lap. I'm going to have to do something special here to get this one back. So, special incoming. As the sun starts to set here at Montreal, this is the quiet lap now, guaranteed. Here we go. 1.9. That's going to almost match my best lap of the race so far. We gained 1.3 seconds on him. It's doable. We've got the pace. We've definitely got the pace here, guys. We just need to make it happen. To answer your question, Jezza, yes. I am seven points behind this guy in the championship. So if I win the race, I score 25, he scores 18, we'll finish on equal points. But I'll have three wins in this season compared to his two wins in the season. Hey Nick the Silver! Five minutes to go, you're looking good for a podium. We've been fighting all race long, we finally dropped the guy behind us. This is it, this is literally left side. Clear to the left. a dead fight for the championship right here. Hold your line. Still there. I wasn't expecting that dive then, but he kind of caught me out on the brakes a bit. Still there. So I had to either run into the back Still of him or there. send it. That wasn't intentional. Still there. Still there. Oh! Still there. Clear 
right. just turns into me. I've got nowhere to go. We can't go through that final chicane side by side. It's definitely a case of win it or bin it. Got four minutes left in the race. So literally whoever wins this race wins the championship. The entire GT3 championship. And we've got traffic coming up as well. We're coming up on back markers. Just to add even more spice into the mix. Are we going to catch him before the end of the race? We might just. Traffic could come into this. 3 minutes 41 remaining. This is epic. And it just looks beautiful as well. Oh, a good point, Olaf. I should have done that. Brakes are starting to go a bit long as well. It's not braking the same as it did at the start of the race. I think I've overheated them a bit and damaged them a bit. I'm going to have two laps to go after this. Yep, there's traffic. What an absolute nail-biter for the GT3 Series win. For an absolute ton of prize money. And potentially a drive in the WEC. I learned my mistake. I'm not going to make this move again. Better to get the drive out. There we go. Dummy him to the left. That's it. Can I hopefully get the inside for two. He's going to squeeze me. Still there. Hold your line. Clear on the left. We're setting the pace. That was at 136. 36. Couldn't quite make the switchback work. Two laps to go. Traffic's, traffic's going to get in the way. We're going to get traffic. Back markers in the way as well. I haven't had this in a race so far. They must have started on wets and changed. Can we use this to our advantage? That's two minutes left. Two minutes. This is so awkward. Move out of the way. Right side. Clear right. Thank you, AI. Good work. That was very nice. Left the slew under braking. On your left. Still there. Clear left. Well done, down. Great move. You're going to get held up in the braking so I'm going to take advantage of that. That was opportunistic. Backmarker held him up. There's a nice gap on the inside. Oh, one more lap to go after this. Keep it on the road. Keep it on the road. This guy lets me through. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. We're well, right. You now need one more lap. Keep it together. We'll win this. One point two seconds to the guy behind. Keep it on the road. Gap is a second. Just keep it on the road, no mistakes. And the championship is ours! Hey, George! The gap is 2.3 seconds! 4 seconds, has he binned it? Has he binned it? Has the guy behind binned it or something? He's going slow. Looks very dark. Looks like it's about to rain, maybe. On the last lap of the race. Where did these clouds come from? 1.2 seconds back. For the championship, I think we've done it. Just the final chicane to go. That traffic's too far ahead to make any distance. Uh, no plus one lap in this, Sean. When it says zero, that's the end. That's the final lap. There we go. We did it. We made it through the chicane. We're going to cross the line. Is that, is that the win? 
Well done, Dan. Great win. You deserve that today. <laughs> Yes! Oh my goodness! And Ricardo Mauricio finishes in second position, which means, by my calculations, we both finish the season on 99 points. However, I won three races this season. He won two races this season. I think the Bolt Brogan is a GT3 champion on Countback. Left side. I think so. I think so. This is definitely the highlight of my racing life career so far. My goodness. Thank you, John. Jezza, Hannah, John Miller, uh, Potato, Donnie, Nick, George, Sean. All right. Is it 92 or 99 points? I think it's... Let's have a look. Skip cooldown lap. And let's get official confirmation. We're left. Oh, <laughs> what a race. Two amazing races so far. That stock car race at Bathurst was insane. And then that GT3 race to follow it up as well. My goodness. So confirmation, that is the win from Ricardo Mauricio. Let's continue. Wait, hang on a second. 26 points. Oh, I forgot there's a point for fastest lap. Of course, we're using Formula One. Uh, we're using the Formula One scoring system. Of, there's a point for fastest lap. I got fastest lap in the race. It's not a tie. Bolt Brogan wins it by f six. How does that work? I was seven behind. I was seven behind. And I scored eight more points than him in that race. Hang on. How does that work? Have I... what? Have I got my maths completely wrong? I mean, either way, I had to win that race to win the championship. There's no doubt about that. But that is... Bolt Brogan. GT3 champion. <laughs> what a series. What a series. Bonus points for the Mustache Liam, probably. We'll see. Wow! Okay, I think we just avoided some rain at the end of the race there as well. Actually, I can see it's very dark in the background there. Oh. Oh. So, qualified in third. I thought I was seven behind Mauricio. I don't... I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and look at the points. That is very confusing. <laughs> Racing champion failure at maths. I mean, I had to win the race to uh, to be able to to be able to win that championship. Anyway, let's continue and let's go and put those numbers into racing life, shall we? <sighs> wow, that was awesome! I can't believe it. I won the championship, GT3 championship, and uh, yep, that was my trophy. Just as a confirmation, just to show you that big loud crash, um, that fell off. That. It should be like that, basically. That's my Dirt Rally 2.0 Community Championship. So let's get that back in focus again. Let's squeeze that back together. And let's, uh, let's go and put our results in, shall we? So let's advance. GT3 World Challenge. Oh, uh, did I get Kowalski and Mauricio mixed up? I got Kowalski and Mauricio mixed up. I thought it was the other way around. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> That's what we do. So, qualified in... Th was it third? Or was it fourth? I think it was third, wasn't it? Qualified in third. We finished the race in first, and we won the championship as well. Okay. Was it? Th I think it was third. Yeah, it was. It was third. Made the finish a lot more tense than it needed to be. That's right, George. My stupid math skills made it a lot more dramatic than it needed to be. Right, let's put these results in. And let's see what kind of prizes we get. So, finish. Boom. Oh. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Race result fame earned, 0.74. Championship fame earned, a whopping 9.38. We've gained more than 10 fame 
just by doing that. That's like we've we've jumped up twenty percent by winning the GT3 series. Uh, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand eight hundred dollars from the sponsor, and three hundred thousand in prize money. Wow, that's insane. So let's continue. <laughs> Look at that! Fame is up at fifty, which means. I mean, we can't drive in the Formula 1 series yet, because that is... well, that needs 65 fame. But look! We can race in the WEC! We can we can get a GT year and LMP2 on the go now! We got, don't quite have enough to race in the DTM GT3 series. Um... Wow! Yeah, okay, well that, that looks like... that looks like what we're going to be doing next then, guys. We're going to be entering into the WEC. Incredible. Incredible scenes. GTE series. That's that's incredible. Um, for some reason, LMP2 prize money is only $675,000. Whereas the GTE prize money is at $1.25 million. So I think GTEs might be on the cards here. So, and competition popularity goes up to 75, whereas LMP2s only goes up to 65. So, if we want to take part in the Formula 1 season, if we want to shoot the fame up to 65 that we need to get racing in Formula 1, it's GTEs by the looks of things. Wow. Anyway, let's go to the garage. We don't need our stock car anymore. So I want to stop leasing that stock car because we've done that, we've finished, we, we've ended that season, we're not going to use that car again, and uh, that's going to save me over five grand a month. So it was fun, stock car 2022, but sadly this agreement's going to come to an end. Bye bye. Okay, so now we've got our Formula 3 car in the garage which we're going to need for our next race. We've got our LMP4 car, or P4 car, not LM, it's just a P4. We're going to need that to finish that championship, and... Is it worth keeping the GT3 car? I mean, we're not going to use it next month, because we, we're not going to get the fame... Well, I mean, maybe. We got the Formula 3 championship, that's round 5. And we got round 6, that gets us up to 50. Ah, okay, right then. Right. Okay, let's do some logic here. The most fame I can possibly get to with the Formula 3 Championship is 50. Which means that that's not going to be enough to register for the DTM... Uh, for the DTM series, because you need 55. The restriction is 55 here, you can see. So even if I win the Formula 3 Championship, which is looking unlikely at this stage, I'm six points behind and we're going into a few tricky circuits, even if I win the Formula 3 Championship, it's not going to get me enough fame. So, the next time I can use a GT3 car... Well, I can't use it in the WEC. Um, and there's no further championships, there's no special events. There's the ADAC GT Masters, there's IMSA GT3. And... Mm, by the time I get to there, I'm going to be in the middle of a GTE series. So it's like, well, what's the point? Because I'm already going to be superseded that with a higher fame championship. So I don't think... I don't think... It makes much sense financially to keep hold of this Porsche GT3. Because we're going to be spending nearly 12 grand a month on the lease for it. And what's it going to do? It's just going to sit in the garage, waste money. So I am going to stop that lease as well. I'm going to double down on my prize money. Hmm. <laughs> you are not ready to buy... to, to be a GTM... driver. <laughs> Thanks, so. <Olaf. laughs> Thank you. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to be a DTM driver. <sighs> so I'm going to stop the lease on that Porsche. We don't need that for the foreseeable future. Let's save our... let's save our bulk coin. So, in terms of racing, there is only one option. There's no point putting a vote out. It's literally, we have to do the Formula 3 at Daytona Road Course next. And then after that, it's the Formula 3 at Indianapolis. So there's no more LMP4 races this month. We've already done it. So we're going to have to do two Formula 3 races in a row. And then we can get over to the LMP4 Cup. So actually, actually, we're going to do round four and round five. 
consecutively in the Formula 3. Okay, let's do that then. That's what we're doing. So, sponsorship, again, it's fine. We've got six races left on our contract, and as long as we finish in the top ten, we get our bonus money with Citrix. That's all you need to know. Um, it's not Gazprom. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, there's nothing more to sort out, really. Apart from basking in the glow. Look at that bank balance. 832,173. 832,173 bulk coin. 53 races, 14 poles, 27 podiums, 19 wins, and uh, achievements. There we go. We're getting there. Uh, do we have any major trophies? No, the GT3 series is not a major trophy. So, uh, think of that what you will. So, next. Yeah. Formula 3 at Daytona. And Formula 3 at Indianapolis. Let's go! Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's so good. What a, what a series. Bulk Brogan is a GT3 champion. Who'd have thought it? Right, Formula 3. Daytona road course, Indianapolis road course. I'm going to keep the AI skill at 105 because it worked really well in the stock cars and it worked really well in the um, GT3. So let's keep it. These are going to be some quicker races though. We've got 10 minute qualifying, 15 minute races. So let's just get stuck straight into it. Not much more to say really. And as you can see on the circuit map here, this is the version of Daytona that has the little chicane. So it's not the flat out run to the start finish line, it's got the extra chicane after the bus stop. We're getting ready to join in the session. Let's get those glasses off. We've got... <laughs> of course we have. We've got heavy cloud and a wet track. Ah, uh, Formula 3s. It, what is it? Bulk Brogan just being a, a weather magnet. So let's get the wet tyres on. There we go. Yeah, go on. And let's get out on track and let's get a quality lap in. Nine and a half minutes to go. Oh, Liam Murray. What I would do for some dim sims right now. Deep fried. I always tend to go for steamed. Um, Jezza, do I do endurance races in VR? The pit exit's clear. All right, Dan, we've got nine minutes to get the job done. Your tyres are cold, watch out. We've got cold brakes all round. Yes, I do. That's what I started the channel on, really. I used to do the VLMC, the Virtual Le Mans Cup, and then I moved over to the... We're all out. Virtual Endurance Championship. And I've done some iRacing Enduros as well. I've done some ACC Enduros. All of them in VR. The uh, the VEC and the W uh, VLMC, they were both in R-Factor 2. That's what Potato is referring to. Uh, I don't have a great history. Oh, moving under braking much. I don't have a great history with R-Factor 2. We're all out. But maybe soon I'll be getting back into it. It's made a lot of changes since I've uh, previously used it. Uh, my eyes seem to be fine. It's honestly, VR's not an issue for me. I use um, prescription inserts, by the way. On your left. Hold your line. Clear to the left. So, because normally I wear glasses. And uh, I've got custom 3D printed inserts in the, inside the VR headset that match my prescription. So it's basically like 2020 vision without the glasses inside VR. Um, I don't tend to get fatigue. What side? Oh, that's not the chicane I was expecting.
But yeah, I, I have no issues running long sessions. I've got no, no, no issue running long sessions in VR at all. In fact, most of my practice sessions used to go for like two or three hours sometimes. I guess you just get used to it over time. Yeah, it's a very odd chicane, that one, Potato. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the other chicane at Daytona. <laughs> Laughing gravy. Yeah, I think I do need to take some rear wing out, Rangy. Of course, I am just using this on absolute stock standard default. Looking forward to RF2 potato, I am. I'm gonna come into it with a fresh approach. The leader has just done 156.42. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I may be taking part in a Le Mans 24 hour race in June, is it, potato? In our factor two? Is it May or June? I can't remember. Uh, but basically, I'm going to be teaming up with Very Important Potato. And Nick the Silver. The leader's just done 156.26. That's a very odd chicane. It's a very odd chicane, that. Uh, no, it's not VEC. It's a private event, I think. Okay, down five minutes to go. P1 Gaming, that's the one. Oh, around it goes. Okay, this is my opportunity to return to the pit box and take some wang out. Let's half it. Actually, let's go down to... Eight. So this is redemption. Uh, this 24-hour race is going to be redemption for uh, missing out on my chance to drive in the VEC 24 hours of Le Mans a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, it was about eight hours into the race. I was about to start my first stint, the graveyard shift, because obviously being here in Australia, that's very convenient for the Europeans I was racing with. Next exit is clear. Don't cross the line. New fastest lap for Di Pietro, 155.90. And unfortunately, the car was not in the race by the time I woke up and did my stint. It was no longer with us. It was in a few pieces in the in the garage. Yeah, that one, Vouter. And I've always had it on my to-do list to get back into a 24-hour race, you know, after that. I feel like unfinished business. Hey, Kevin M. Tires need to warm up. Warm up fast. Ahead has just posted a 158.58. A silver orange potato. <laughs> I like that a lot, Donnie. That's cool. But yeah, that's going to be coming up in June, so keep an eye out for that. I just need a new hard drive to uh, install our Factor 2 on. Ran out of revs there. Has the track dried up and no one told me? Might be a dry track here. Oh, true. It went off the top of the screen. Sorry, Olaf. Credit where credit's due. Oh, those curbs are brutal. 
My goodness me. So I'm going to get one shot at this, I think. This needs to be a perfect okay, lap. Had a bit of suspension damage. It's probably all right. Get a lap on the board with my reduced downforce. Six tenths up. Nice wide entry here. Get the drive out. Use that moisture on the outside. 155 is the lap time to aim for. I'm way behind on it so far. Sector 1 is 1.3 off the pace. Your brake temperatures are fine, mate. This is where we're going to start seeing all the benefits of that um, rear wing, though. Okay, that's eight tenths up. Nine tenths up. Second up. 1.1. Bit sideways, 1.2. It's still damp. It's definitely not dry yet. 1.4, 1 1.5. 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. Where's this going to put me on the grid? Hopefully into the top 10. Oh, 11. Today, sector one is 1.3 off the pace. Sector two is 0.9 off the pace. Sector I actually crossed, I crossed the line with a tenth to go. I didn't realise. I thought the qualifying session was over, but it's still going. I get one more lap in. Okay, three tenths down already, though. I think half of the track is dry, and these tyres are starting to overheat now. Can I improve? I have to find six tenths if I want to get any more meaningful positions on the grid. It's very slidey here. of an okay runoff there. Only two tenths down on my best. Definitely lots of time to be made up in these two chicanes. I'm really not familiar with that final chicane yet. Rangy thinks some more front wing is needed. I'll take his advice. Maybe I can lengthen six gear as well. I'm topping out here. There we go. Good run. Good run. <coughs> Need to nail the chicane now. I don't think I've done a proper endurance race with you, Nick, now. That was so sketchy. That's going to be quarter of a second up. That's not enough to get me more than tenth on the grid. That's not bad, though. Ah. Just remind you, the AI is still on 105, so I haven't changed anything. Uh, Bolt Brogan is now Brazilian, apparently. And now we are starting the Formula 3 race at the Daytona NASCAR road course in 10th position. So right in the middle. So let's continue to race one. 15 minutes. You'll need to get on with this. Okay, we got a wet track and heavy clouds. So we're definitely going to be going on to wet tyres for this. And uh, let's pump the front wing up by one. Let's go to the advanced setup. Let's go to the drivetrain. Let's increase that sixth gear by one. That's good. Um, and I'm going to leave the setup at that.
Bulkinio Brogan. <laughs> I like that, George. Okay, so 15 minute race. No plus one lap. Uh, realistically, we're going to be getting about 10 laps out of this. So I reckon... Is that right? 20 litres of fuel? So let's have a look. So 15 times 60 gives us 900. Uh, we're going to be doing, say, 157s in the rain. So divide that by 117 gives us 7, say, 8 laps. 8. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. 20 litres should be more than fine. Okay. Oh, I do miss a good ranked enduro, Liam. Um, race room just isn't what it used to be, sadly, in terms of the ranked endurance races. Um, the schedule's not as good as it used to be. Uh, the participation isn't as good as it used to be. Uh, there was a phase when everybody was doing that, and it was great. We had some awesome races, but I guess people just lost interest and or maybe lost patience with the servers, which is a massive shame because that was the bulk of the content on the channel for a while, if you'll pardon the pun. And it was, from a really selfish point of view, it was my most popular streams as well. Uh, regularly be getting 100 viewers. Although that's probably either the giveaway codes that I had for race room, or it was all the Europeans waking up wanted to get a sneak preview of the strategy for their race later in the day. But uh, yeah. I do miss those streams quite a lot. They were superb. But I love these streams. These Bulk Brogan streams are just so much fun. Just a chance to let loose, race against the AI, just have a bit of fun, hang out with you guys, and just enjoy it. And that's what it's all about, really. That's the main purpose of doing these streams. And I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. It is always great to hang out with you. Don't forget to leave the stream a like, say hi in chat, and subscribe for more shenanigans. So, yeah, that is that. Great stuff. Love you all. <laughs> so, okay, right then. It looks like the track has gone from wet to damp now, but there's heavy clouds, so... Is there a drying line? What are other people starting on? Can't tell. The track is damp. Oh, what do you reckon? Wets or dries? Heavy cloud, it might rain, it might not rain. Should we risk some dry tyres? I think we should risk some dry tyres. Gotta try something, haven't we, hey? Tyre pressures are set as well. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> rangy. <laughs> damp is dry in AMS too. Okay, so damp... Okay, track temp is 24 as well, so I think that's probably going to dry out the track quite nicely. We'll start on slicks, and we'll have a wet strategy selected by default. So if it does rain, we can come in and change tyres. So, let's uh, give this a crack then, shall we? Unless it rains, dries are the right way to go, because the track will be drying out pretty quickly. Although it'll be a narrow racing line, maybe with some standing water. 15 minutes, starting in 10th. I am 6 points behind the championship leader, which is Leo Naguera. So I really need to try and not finish too far back again. Uh, no weather forecast, unfortunately. There's no way of seeing what it's going to be turning into. So 15 minutes, standing start. Wish me luck. Let's do this. Tenth position. Okay, down. Oh, it's a standing start on the oval. No. Go. On slick tyres, no less. Car one. Still there. Three wide, you're on the right. Car one. Hold your line. Clear left. On your left. Clear left. One side. Still there. Still there. Very tricky to get the power down. Oh wow, yep. Yeah. There's no grip there. Left, left side. Still there. Far left. Left side. Still there. Clear to the left. We're going backwards. Clear to the right. Far left. Clear left. On your left. Oh! 
there. Hold your line. Clear left. Right side. And she's at straight line speeds. Right. Wow, we're pulling away massively. <laughs> Liam Murray. Yeah, we've got a massive straight line advantage here because of the wing we've taken out. Take it nice and easy through the bus stop here. Oh! Just got away with that. In terms of not binning it, but not in terms of position. Oh! Sorry! We really need this track to start drying out. Right side, three wide, you're on the right. Left side. Clear to the left. The guys ahead getting stuck over the curbs. Being very defensive with the elbows there, but I have to. AI are already pulling away massively. Hopefully once the track starts to dry and warm up, the race will come back to us. It's just like Kyle Army all over again. in touch with the top 10 though oh wow yep just doesn't turn in at all goodness on your left clear to the left right side so slippy clear to the right dry tires probably not the best choice they're just not heating up okay down the next car is Fausto wow left side Three there left. is You're no right. grip clear left on your left the AI have got grip hacks here. Steady. So Steady. much more speed than me. Back down in 19th place. This is one of the things I don't like about AMS2. This is the variability in some of the AI skills, you know? Like they just they're just on a different physics model, it seems. Well, I mean no, it seems they are. They just got so much more traction. Oh, I put plus one on the front rangey, but obviously plus two should have been where it's at. Still there. Dropping back heaps. And the AI is the same as I had for the stock car. The leader's just done a 154.34. Oh, 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 ow. Completely forgot about that chicane then. Don't panic. Completely forgot about that chicane, that's just a brain fart. You're running last. You've just done a 2.00.8 zero, zero seconds. I'm surprised the car's not got suspension damage after that. Come on, track, please dry out. Come on, track, please dry out. All right, turn in early here. A little lift just to get it through. Don't hit the grass on the outside. Yes, made it through there for the first time this race. All right, I can't see a drying line. Your tires are cold. Watch out. Oh, I know that. The gap in front has increased to 3.7. Yeah, I've got absolutely no answer for these guys. I'm dropping back so much. I've just... I mean, I'm driving as fast as I can. Even with a clean lap, it's three seconds up on my personal best. They're five seconds ahead of me. There's not much I can do here, really. What do you reckon, guys? Should we just keep going, or do we restart it and bump the AI down a bit? Because... Yeah, qualifying was not great, and now the race ain't great either. <laughs> this is a shocking one. Unless... New fastest lap for Lima, 153.00. Unless these are all on wets, and they're all going to come into the pits. Okay, this is definitely going to be my best lap of the race so far. 
that was uh, four seconds off the pace. That's your quickest lap in this session. Sector one is 2.3 off the pace. Four seconds off the pace, guys. That's a bit much. Rangy says stick with it. All right. I'm going to stick with it. It is what it is. And we're approaching the halfway point of the race here. Second up on this lap. I think I think the tyres are starting to come in now. Point four up on this lap. It's still not, it's still not enough to catch the back markers. I'm still dropping back from 19th position. The gap ahead is now 4.4. Yeah. Oh, big bounce over the curb there. I think the suspension's okay. Yep, okay, looks alright. Halfway home, got plenty of fuel. Your front tires are cold. It's a bit lonely, this. A bit depressing. You know, what, what can I really do in this situation? Guy ahead did a 154 flat. Lima, just retired from the race. Come on, oh. Heather, keep your focus further down Someone's the track. retired. The lap time was at 153.34. That's your best lap in the session. Well, that's why someone's retired. There's a wheel and a front wing on the circuit. P19, baby. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. <laughs> Citrix support recommends a restart. The gap in front is now 3.5. That was actually a quicker way of doing that corner and gaining on my PB. Yeah, it does sound a bit waspy, doesn't it, Hannah? It's got the same colours as well. Five and a bit minutes to go. Di Pietro is now leading. Seven tenths up on this lap. Okay, the pace is starting to come to us. Although Sean and Liam are both recommending a restart of this race. The fastest lap for Di Pietro, 151.36. Oh, in the way. In the wall. Hopefully that's not got too much damage on the suspension. Steering feels okay. You've just done a 152.46. That's your best lap in this session. Five minutes remaining, five minutes left. All right, let's see what we can get. We are getting closer. I think points only go towards the top 10. And that's very impossible, I'd say. All right, Dan, gaining on the car in front. The gap's now 2.4 seconds. What a lonely old race. bit wide there. Yeah, I don't think starting on wets would have been a good idea either, because now the track is dry, we would have had to come in. There's a few positions up there, though, all fighting. If I can just get a little bit of slipstream, might be able to get stuck into that. But I need to be into the 151s. 
Oh, I just, um, AI grip hacks, Kevin M. That's what happened. I just got absolutely monstered at the start. They just pulled away from me. And now that, you know, I've actually started to get used to the car and the track and the temperatures come into the tyres, it's, uh... I'm just too far back to be able to do anything. <laughs> Stephen Cole. <laughs> push, push, push. We can catch this car. Oh, just grazed the rear tire there on the wall. Oh, I couldn't agree more, Mark P. The AI is just a little bit overpowered in mixed conditions. But I think the grip is starting to come back to me now, though. The moisture has evaporated from the track. The tyres are getting up to temperature. We're getting into a good place. In before everybody just peels off on the final lap on wets. We got some action coming up here. Okay, Dan, you've used half your fuel. Tire temps are good. The gap in front is now 0.9. Not with an exit like that. Out broke myself. Look at these guys taking the high line. All right, slipstream and rear wing reduction. It's exactly what we need. We're closing, we're closing, we're closing. We're gonna have two laps left, I think. Two minutes to go, two minutes. Yep. I don't think we're gonna get any points, but there could be some positions here. Look at that battle pack up there. Far right. Here we go. Clear right. On your left. Defend that inside. Clear left. Good pass. Job done. All right, last lap coming up now. We're up to 17th. We could get 16, 15, 14, 13, 17. 12th. To go. If we can get this entire pack, that's your quickest lap in this session. All right, we can get P12. So let's do this. Let's salvage something. Let's salvage some pride at the very least. Got him! Three wide! Far left. Still there. Let's defend him on the outside Still there. Still there. Clear on the left. Alright, need to nail this corner. Get the exit with the slipstream. Left side. Still there. Here we go. He's still there. How is this gonna work? On your left. Three wide, you're on the right, three wide, in the middle. Clear all around. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Nice move, mate. Left side. I'll take it though! <laughs> Illegal track gains, not on this stream. <laughs> that was a bit adventurous. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that move. That's one way of doing it. P12. Oh, that's 12. One more lap, and that would have been P10. I could have got some points. Oh, man, if the AI weren't so OP. Oh, and he gives me a tap as well. I don't think he liked that move then. Clear left, far left. Clear to the left. 
That's just bulk being bulk. Very true, George. I gotta give you guys some entertainment in that race, right? P12 on the last lap. One more lap, it could have been P10. If the AI weren't so overpowered at the start, in the mixed conditions when I had absolutely no temperature in the tyres, then it could have, been an could have been an entire different story. But like Rangy said, don't give up. Well, I don't give up. There would have been a time where Bulk Brogan would have restarted that race maybe three or four times. If only I hadn't forgotten there was a chicane. Ah oh, well, Stephen Coe. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, I don't know. Well, that's definitely going to put a big dent in my championship hopes. Um, I think I was just trying too hard at the start, Rangy, to keep up with the AI. I was breaking at the points they were breaking at, which, because I'm on different physics than the AI, it just wasn't realistic, it wasn't doable. So they're breaking way later than I ever could with the grip that I have in my car, but because they're on a simplified version of the physics, it doesn't really matter to them. They can do it. But yeah, dry tyres were definitely the right choice. So, let's return it back to the pits. It's better than a DNF, but it is a P12, which means no sponsorship money. So, official confirmation, 12th position, started in 10th, finished 12th. That's not going to get as much, uh, much points. Uh, Leon Aguera only jumped up 9 in the standings, though. So let's see how this affects the points. Somehow, we're still in second place in the championship. We got incredibly lucky with that one. That was such a... Such a mixed bag of racing that it didn't really matter that we finished outside of the points. We didn't score any points, but then again, the people that we were battling didn't really score any points either. I mean, Leon Aguera is now 15 clear in the lead of the championship in the pits. after four races. So, uh, it, well, exactly, Liam Murray. I've got to please the sponsors. So really, in this instance, it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been, because it could have been a lot worse in terms of championships. So that's happy. I was only six points behind at the start of the start of the race, and now I'm 15 points behind. But I'm still in second. So that was incredibly lucky. That was incredibly lucky. We we got away with that one. Whew. I mean it could have been an opportunity to get some points back, but that's that doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So let's go back into racing life. And let's uh let's get those results in, shall we? Let's see how that affects us. I don't think we're going to get any fame from that. And we'd, we might, we'll get a little bit of sponsorship money. So if we click on Advance, we go Daytona Road Course, qualified in 10th, finished it in 12th. What does that give us? Uh, zero fame, because we've already maxed out our fame. The most we can get from the Formula 3 Championship is something like 40, and we're already up at 50. So, you know, this is just for the prize money now. Sponsorship money earned. Three thousand three hundred dollar dues. Well, lovely. That's nice. But it's not gonna pay my lease fees for this month because this lease costs me Oh it does! Three thousand two hundred and seventy. Well there you go. Sponsors paid for the car lease for the Formula 3, but I need another four thousand to cover the cost of the P4. So we'll see how we go. I mean, we've got 835,000 in the bank, thanks to our GT3 series win. Again, sorry to rub it in your faces, but Bulk Brogan, GT3 champion. That's not going to get old saying that. <laughs> so, um, in terms of our racing for today, the next one is going to be the Indianapolis Road Course Race. Round 5 of 6 in the American Formula 3 Championship. That's all we've got on for this month. After that, we can skip along to the next month, where see how we feel. It may be round four, uh, round four of the LMP4 Cup as well. So we're definitely going to do one more Formula 3 race, which is going to be here at Indianapolis Road uh, Motor Speedway Road Course. There it is. You can see on the screen right now. So let's just get stuck straight into that. We've got no sponsorship deals to sort out. We've got no votes for what race we're going to do next because we've only got one to choose from. So let's just get stuck straight in. And let's hope that it's not raining. I'm fed up of wet races. <laughs> I just want a dry race. Saying that, Bathurst was a dry race. And I won that. No, I didn't win that. 
I won I won Montreal, that was a wet race. I didn't win Bathurst. It was close to winning it against Rubens Barrichello in the stock cars. So, Indianapolis, same format, 10 minute qualifying, 10 minute, uh, 15 minute race. We've got a clear track, and we've got clear weather, but a wet, a wet track. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, stop giving me wet tracks. Anyway, let's pause that music, and let's get out on track. I'm going to try the dry tyres, because... I'm actually saying that track... Oh, no, track temp 34. That's going to dry up pretty quickly. Let's do this. I got a feeling this might be a mistake. And again, thanks everybody for tuning in. Great to have you here. Whatever time it is. I love your work. Oh, of course, Rangy. I'm still using the setup from last time. Of course. I forgot about that. Let's try that. So, 15.13. Let's give that a go. And the track is now damp, so it is drying out very quickly. That gives us some space on track now as well, actually. Let's get that headset checked in. 8.30 a.m. in Canada. It is 10.30 p.m. here in Brisbane, Australia. So yeah, it's getting pretty late. I'm definitely going to do this race, and depending on how I feel, and whether if you guys want to hang around for a little bit more as well, I might get the LMP4 race in today as well. It takes it looks clear. We have eight minutes to set a lap. It breaks a cold. We need to get some heat into them. We've got cold tyres. We need to get some heat into them. What do you reckon? Do you, do you want to see an LMP4 race as well? Or are you all bulked out for the day? Yep, can confirm track is wet. Hopefully it dries out quickly. I feel like Colton Herter. This has probably got to be one of the least satisfying circuits to drive in all of the sim racing world. It's just so technical and fiddly and just... None of the corners are nice, you know? They're not banked, apart from the final corner, the oval, of course. <coughs> it's flat, it's technical, it's fiddly, it's... It's awful, it's such a... On your right. Such a... Not, not good circuit. Still there. Hold your line. To right. Keep it steady. Right there we go, we got good speed on the straight. P4. On your right. Clear right. The leader has just done a 129. 128. The leader has just done a 129. 118. Car right. Clear right. Sector one is <laughs> Sorry, Valter. Clear right, clear right, you're clear. I mean, everyone's entitled to an opinion, you know, if you like the circuit, fair play to you. But me personally, I just don't see the appeal of it. You know, I just, I've never, never been able to enjoy it. Right side, clear right. Right side. Clear to the right. Sector 2 is 1.4 off the pace. Right side. Hold your line. Clear right. Coming through, right? On your right. 
Clear, clear to the right. Oh, they're coming into the pits. What was the point of that? Okay, track is definitely drying up here. Starting to get some temperature in those fronts as well. Okay, down. That is a 131.6. That puts me three seconds off the pace. 1.4 seconds off the pace. Sector 3 is 0.9 off the pace. That was a 131.69. Still a bit of moisture on the track there, though. Sector one time is good. Saying that flat through the chicane, we're 1.2 seconds up on this lap. Very greasy conditions here. Track. track limits, this lap will be deleted. Never mind. That was a bit late. I thought, oh, I got away with that, but apparently not. So I'll have to do it again. Your brake temps look good. The guy behind has just done a 131.60. The guy ahead's last lap time is a 131.53. That's promising, though. That would be like a 129.6, which has only put me eight tenths of a second off the pace, so it's kind of up there. So let's get a clean lap in, no cuts, and see what we can do. We've got people coming out the pits here, though. Right side, clear right. Thank you for giving me that space, AI. Mucho appreciado. Too much curb. Have I cut the track on the outside? Nope, got away with it. I just I just got the entry wrong. It's still a bit greasy on the on the entry there. Can break a bit later there. There's definitely some performance left at the apex. Right side. Okay, Order don't right. don't cut here on the left. Don't cut here on the right. It's so easy right to take side. a bit more curb. Dude. Guy behind's fighting for me, he's on an outlap as well. Sector 2 is 0.29 off the pace. Nice late entry. Get the run onto the straight. There we go. Balance the throttle through. It's full throttle. It's dry in the final corner now. That's 2.6 seconds up. What's that going to put me on the grid? Oh, straight into pole, 127.1. One. Two minutes left, two minutes to go. That's, uh, that's a bit of an advantage. Like you guys have seen, I've jumped in with exactly the same settings that I just had in the previous race at Daytona. Same car. Same AI difficulty. Sector one time's okay. Same kind of weather conditions, wet, dry track. And I've gone from having a four second a lap disadvantage to a 1.7 second a lap advantage. And I'm even gaining on this lap as well. The leader has just done a Oh, saying that. Oh, saying that was a lot of. They've just smashed me by two seconds. Maybe they were on wets at the start. And now they're setting dry, wet weather times. Okay, I take it back, I'm back down in 7th now. The leader has just done a 124.46. That's the new fastest lap for Di Pietro, 124.36. Alright, clear to the right. Make that 11th place, I've been bumped down to 11th. And next lap is going to be my last lap as well. With only 40 seconds left on the clock. This puts me... 15th! Wow! From pole by 2 seconds to 15th.
Sector one is quick. Mixed weather conditions. I I think all of my opponents went over and uh, went out on dry tyres to begin with. Uh, sorry, on wet tyres to begin with. And now they've started to set times on dry tyres. This is nine tenths of a second up. This might get me a few more spots on the grid. Yeah, this is a second up. Where's this going to put me? This is my final lap. From 15th to 10th. 10th position. Consistent. Very consistent. I was a 24.9 and the leader was a 24.2. So I was 7 tenths off there. 7 tenths of a second off pole position. So... <laughs> That was a very topsy-turvy quality. Yeah, I, I, my, my suspicion is that everybody started on the wets, whereas I was running the dries for the entire session, and then they came in and switched to dries halfway through once they realised that the track was completely dry, whereas I just managed to keep on getting the temp in the tyres and keep on running, so my, my, my times were just gradually increasing and increasing, whereas they were like, OK, we're struggling, let's swap the tyres. So that's encouraging. Seven tenths of a second off. That's a lot closer than I was last time. I think that this is going to be an interesting race. I hope it's dry. I really do hope it's dry. I'm fed up of being outclassed by people with way more grip than is physically possible. So let's continue to race one and cross our fingers. Let's do a dry dance. Fifteen. There we go. You've not got much time to sort this out. Clear track, dry conditions. Starting in 10th with some very big names up ahead of us. So this is going to be a 10th to first challenge, I reckon. Uh, we've definitely got enough fuel in the car. I am going to take a bit of pressure out as well. To see if I can get the tyres to warm up a bit more. Because it's an ambient temp of 9 and a track temp of 36. So let's get some more temp in those tyres. And um, I'm going to pop a little bit more of front wing on it as well. Hey, Vushul! Good to see you, Vush. Uh, yeah, that's going to do me. So, we're starting in 10th. Let's see if we can get up to the front of the field. Our main rival is Leo Naguera. He's 15 points ahead of us. And um, we've got lots of people snapping at our heels as well. So, really is a case of try and beat Leo. And if we can't get Leo, just finish as high as we can. Because this is round five of six in the Formula 3 Championship. And I want to try and get a good result. And again, thank you everybody for sticking with us. Uh, this will be the last Formula 3 race of the stream. And depending on how I feel after this, might do an LMP4 race as well. <laughs> oh, Andre. Yeah, I, I was saying that before, mate. I, uh, just not a fan of this layout. Sorry, sorry again, Vouter. I know you are. Anyway. Let's switch it over to the um, AMS 2 mode driving and let's go and do the standing start. So here we go. Thanks, everybody. Nice and neat. Stay out of trouble. Ten here position. we go. Go. Nice start. Clear on the left. We're going to take the racing line. Rewind, you're on the left, rewind, in the middle, clear right, all clear, left side, two left, rewind. A bit of a lock up into turn left. one there, let's get him around the outside, wow! Hold your line. That was an clear unintentional left. dive, I didn't mean to take that many spots on the inside, I didn't mean to just... Oh, right. What's the AI doing there? That was a very strange line. Clear right. What a start! Tenth to first! Welcome down. Good start. Now it's my race to lose. Alright. Oh. Hold your line. 
Yeah, I, I can't really take any credit for that start. I mean, I know it looks impressive, but I really wasn't taking the best racing lines. It's like the AI were kind of tripping over themselves. So that's very strange. Right Normally, side. they're a lot better than a lot better than that on the first lap. We're right. But now I've got to try and defend it. Oh, those rears are very slippy. Maybe I put the pressure down too much. <laughs> You're leading. Oh, don't say that, Vushal. Going to rear end someone coming into the pits. But thankfully, no pit stops in this race. All right, clear to the right. Yep, definitely true, Kevin. The AI had seven tenths of a second over me in qualifying, and literally nothing has changed since then. So this is my race to lose, and as long as I finish ahead of Leon Aguera, that's all that matters, really. Try and claw back some points in this championship. One side. After Daytona, which was an absolute shocker, where I got zero points for finishing in 12th. Right side, clear right. Just keep it nice and tight. Just make sure I can get those defensive lines in. All right. Clear right. Wow. The rear is just breaking traction through that corner there. Because it's a Formula 3, I can kind of get away with it and kind of drift it through. But I think the rear wing that I've taken out and the reduced pressures are just really struggling for grip through there. The rear of the car can't live with the demands of the front. I've outbreak myself there. Defend myself. Oh, Naguera's up to second. Far right. Oh, he's diving me on the inside. I've got to give him that space. Straight line, that chicane. They're all over me. Yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting from this race. They're all over me. Yep, 11 minutes to go. I've intense pressure. I've got to try and hold them off. I've just got to drive it so defensive. Right side. Hold your line. Clear to the right. On your one. Okay, give it a lift now because I know it's going to break traction. Clear left. Yeah, they've got so much more grip than me through there. Alejandro Di Pietro into the lead of the race. We've got the slipstream back on him here, though. Big advantage. Wow, big straight line speed advantage. That's as late as I possibly can be on the brakes without locking up. They're all over me. Whoa. Left side, clear to the left. It's a bulk roadblock right now. Definitely. Top five covered by half a second. Okay, down, I am holding them up so left. much. So they had a bit of a fight behind though. There's suddenly a 1.5 second advantage. Watch for the rear braking traction. Run it wide. Line of least resistance. Try and get the grip down. Best lap of the race so far. 1.8 on the AI. Just 
just got to try and hold on to this. Try and get some of those points back from Naguera. Straight line this. The kerb on the right is nasty if you run it too tight. But the kerb on the left is quite flat, so you really gotta you've really gotta go a lot tighter on the entry to that chicane than you think. And this one as well, the corner kinda tightens up after the apex. So you can't get on the power as quickly as you think. You gotta hold it there for longer. And this one as well. Ammo for my best lap of the race so far. But they've closed up about a second on me. Wow. Big slide on the rear then. And just like that, he's all over my ass again. That was my best lap of the race. That's going to be at 125. Five. And they're doing 124 threes, 1.2 seconds. They've got so much pace on me. They had 0.7 in qualifying, they got 1.2 in the race. That's half distance. Sure, that <laughs> it's only halfway through the race. This is so stressful. Massive pressure. I hope you guys can see the virtual mirror okay. I hope it's big enough on the screen. You can see the details of the car behind. I don't tend to run actual mirrors, physical mirrors, because, well, they're a bit of a drain on the GPU performance, and it's better to run the virtual mirror, because then that stays fixed in position on the circuit, on the circuit, Still on the screen there. anyway. Oh, tap! Still there. Or what? Clear left. Uh, the virtual mirror stays fixed in, in position on the screen. So it makes it a lot easier for the viewer. Hold the apex. All right. Three wide. You're the left. Clear. Clear to the right. On your left. Clear left. I know I've got a straight line speed advantage because I've taken some of the rear wing out. <laughs> Doggo tactics are aloof. Definitely JDF. Definitely JDF. I'm doing everything I can to keep these guys behind me. Look at them four wide in the mirror. Oh, lock up, lock up. He's still there. Clear right. Just gotta hold it tight. Go full Ministry of Defense here. Um, I can't remember if I have or not, Bushel. I think so. I think I've turned off the grass. But I haven't had any stuttering since that Hockenheim race. So, hard to say. And that wasn't a cut track. That's probably as much of the apex as I can get away with. <laughs> Kevin M, if it's still like this towards the end of the race, on the final lap, which, let's be honest, why is it not going to be? Right. These guys aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Then, yeah, I might have to, there. might have to go right. quiet. Clear. Or left. Clear left. Come on down. Just five minutes left. Hold your nerve. We can win this. Two thirds of the way through the race. Elbows out. You've just done it. Yep, yeah, that rear wing is definitely helping me on the straights. That's saving me from getting bombed in the corners. Another lockup into turn one. Maybe I've got a flat spot. Maybe a flat spot in my fronts. Right side. Clear right. Hey, some racers arms. Good to see you, sir. Hope you keep them well. Just ignore him, he'll go away. <laughs> no, he won't. I'm gonna knock that brake by his rearwards a couple of clicks just to try and help out with that front locking. Might make it a little bit twitchier under braking, but I'm not gonna be pressing the brakes as hard anyway. All right, clear right.
Yeah, that definitely helps out with the front locking. Well, oh, mega dive from the Guerra behind. He is in the championship lead after all, so he wants to try and stop me from reducing his points lead. On your left, clear to the left. He's currently got a 15 point advantage. Hold your line. Let's see that rear wing kick in now. Yep, there we go. That's the rear wing in action. Rear tyres starting to wear out just a little bit. That lap was at 125.30. That's your quickest lap. You can see from the amount of sliding that's going on right now. Right side, clear right. Just keeps on poking the nose in there, thinking it's going to be different. But I'm going to. Well, not chop him off, but I've got the racing line. He's trying to off offset me. He's trying to push me wide. Car right. Oh, he's You're definitely right. trying to push me wide there. You're in the lead. Big clunk on the rear right. His patience is starting to wear thin by this slow poke up at the front of the race called DDF. Except it's not DDF, it's Bulk. On your right. Keep it steady. Bulk right. with the widest arse in all the motorsport right now. Stay right. Clear left. A little confidence lift through the final corner. Elvis Lima. The guy who retired from Daytona is now in second. I need as many people to get in between me and Naguera as possible. Oh, I'm doing my best, punch a waterfall. I've been, I've been doing this 15 minutes now, man. This is stressful. That's half fuel. You've used half your fuel. Definitely got enough fuel to go to the end, so I've got this lap and one more. Run it out nice and wide to the exit. This is going to be my best lap of the race, but it pales into insignificance compared to what the AI can do here. On your left, clear to the left. That's it, get the power down through the final corner, we're a tenth up. Excellent! Best lap of the race for me. Stay focused. Our last lap was at 125. Went 18. Come on, here we That's go. Let's hold it on. Let's hold it together, should I say? Not let's hold it on. Don't know what hold it on means in racing context. Don't think it means anything. I'm just crossing my wires in my brain. Got one eye on the track ahead of me. And one eye on the mirror behind me, making sure I put. Uh, put my car in the right place so as I don't get overtaken only a few more corners to go halfway through the final lap watch for second up on my best as well Suddenly finding some pace at the end of the race here, but still not enough to match the AI. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Far left. Clear left. You're kidding me! You're kidding me, no! I ran it, that's the first time I've ran it wide in that corner all race! Well done, Dan. Great drive. That's a podium. <laughs> Car <or> one. <laughs> no! I wobbled it on the last Clear. corner. Clear to the left. Oh, Three you're kidding me. Clear left. I just got too ahead of myself Car there. Right. I just... The rear got wobbly under braking. 
I can't believe that. Nicked at the final corner, but at least it wasn't Naguera. In fact, Naguera actually got bumped right back to side. fourth place all there. Right. Clear all around. On your left. So that actually worked out quite well. I mean, it could have been better. <laughs> I swear, honestly, that was not intentional. I did not do that on purpose. I did not rig that. I literally just wobbled it on the final corner. I just went, Oop, and, and just had like a... I just, just had a, a rear locking moment onto that corner. Got wide onto the marbles. Car wouldn't turn. And that was it. And that was literally all it took. One mistake is literally all it takes. Like, I hadn't... I hadn't Left surrendered side. the inside line at any point throughout... I hadn't surrendered the inside line at any point of any left. corner throughout that race whatsoever for 15 minutes. And then one time... One time... Line. Oh. Line. So, so, sorry to let you guys down on that one, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tenth to second. What a start, though. That wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for that start on the first lap. Should we have a look at that again? Let's have a look at that first lap, shall we? Watch this. So we've got a couple of people there. We move to the outside to get this person here. It's now three wide. There's a gap here. Move out of the way here, and then... Bit of a lock up into the first corner, slight tap. Get these guys. Around the outside, they're too busy fighting. And now we've got the inside line here. And then these guys, what kind of line are these taking here? Get the cut back and straight line as she came, but they're kind of tripping over each other. And just taking the middle of the track, and that gives us the entire spot. So there we go, job done. And that's how we got the lead of the race. And that's how we managed to hold on to that until the very final corner. What a start. <laughs> what a start. So, let's let's get some points on the board, shall we? Let's see how that works out. So, Elvis, who left the building in the previous race. Alright, Kevin M, look after yourself, sir. I think I am going to do this LMP4 race. I think I'm going to stick around and do this one final race to see the stream off. Because then we've done, you know, we've done a stock car race, we've done a GT3 race, we've done two Formula 3 races, and then we're just going to finish. We want to get one of each, and so let's do an LMP4 race. So, uh, 12 points for me. And 7 points for Naguera. It could have been 15 to 7, so I could have... I could have got that deficit down quite a bit, but now the points are... Looking a little bit better. Look at that, I'm only 10 points behind now. It was 15, but now it's only 10. And I've got a 11 point lead over Elvis, Elvis Lima as well. So that's quite good, heading into the final round. So round 5 of 6, that was done. So I've got a 10 point deficit. So second in the championship, unless something goes horribly wrong in the final round at... Where is it? Where's the final round going to be in the Formula 3s? Uh, final round of the Formula 3 is going to be at Bathurst. Bathurst. <laughs> oh. Season finale at Bathurst, 10 points behind Leo Naguera. Goodness. Yep, that's just confirmation of it here on screen as well. And let's put some music on in the background as well. Yep, so you can see 10 points behind... Bathurst, that's going to be it. That's going to be an epic season finale. Wow. Okay. Next stream, that's going to be happening on the next stream. So today, let's go and put those results in. So if we go to competition and advance, I think P1 gets 15 points indeed. So it's doable, Vushal. It's definitely doable. So we qualified in 10th and finished in oh, second. But we get our bonus. We get our sponsorship bonus, and that's that's all that matters. So, 10,800 bulk coins straight into the bank. But because we've always maxed out our fame... Excuse me. Because we've already maxed out our fame, thanks to the uh, GT3 trophy that we won earlier on today, uh, yeah, there's no fame benefit for that whatsoever. So, just, just the money. Thank you, Citrix, for paying me lots of nice, shiny dollars. So, go back to competition. There's nothing else we want to register for this month. Nope, we're good. So if we click advance, got no more registered races. 
We're now moving over from April to May. So we're now in May. And this is where things get interesting because the World Endurance Championship gives us 40... Well, the, the limit is 45 in terms of fame. We're on 50. So we're going to be going WEC racing this month. That is going to be insane. I think I'm going to do one hour races, multi-class between LMP2 and GTE. I don't think I'm going to put LMP1s in there as well. We'll see how we go. We'll, we'll sort something out. I want to make sure it's not too crazy. But LMP1's race in the real WEC. So let's, you know, let's pop some LMP1. Or oh, well, LMDH, but we don't have them yet. Yeah. So that's that's going to be coming up soon in the future. I would want to race LMP2, but the prize money is only $675,000 compared to $1.25 million. So yeah, GTE is definitely where the money's at. But in terms of races to finish before we can get there, we have the season finale of the Ameri um, American Formula 3 Championship, which we're going to do next stream. That'll be the first race next stream, actually, because now, finally, today, we're going to do some LMP4. Specifically, I think it's a 20-minute race, or is it a 15-minute race, at Campo Grande, which is round 4 or 5 of the uh, LMP4 Championship. So if we switch it back to Automobilist 2 mode, and we have a look at our LMP4 season, we can see that this is where we're up to. So, 27 points on the board. We're behind Bento Galdino, Werner Koenig, Marcio Machado... Guillermo Samuez and Richard Cost Jr. So we're a little bit far behind where we want to be. We had a shocking race earlier in the week at Taruma. So let's, let's forget about that. We're miles off the pace. So Campo Grande, 10 minute qualifying, 15 minute race. I like this circuit, by the way. This is where we did hot cars. I know this circuit quite well. So let's just get stuck straight into it. Let's just go straight into the LMP4 race. Uh, we don't need to sort any sponsorship deals out. Do we? No, we've still got four races left on our contract. There's no other outstanding things we need to sort out. Uh, we've got all the cars in the garage that we need. We don't need a loan. And we've got $844,000 in the bank. So jobs are good. And we, just don't, we just don't need to mess around with racing life right now. It's running itself. We just need to go and do the actual racing. So let's go and do that. LMP4s, or sorry, P4s at Campo Grande. Please be dry. Please, please, please be dry. <laughs> hmm. And again, thank you for sticking around. It's great to have you here. I'm loving these streams. It's just something a bit more lighthearted, a bit more fun, you know? Okay. Light cloud and dry. Let's edit that setup. We've got slick tires, we've got the fuel in the tank. Nothing more to do really than just get out on track and get driving because we've only got nine and a half minutes left to set a lap. Oh, I love the sound of this thing. And this is a circuit I'm familiar with. We raced hot cars here at the very start of Buck Brogan's career. Exit's clear. Stay behind the white line. Okay, down. We've got nine minutes to settle up. Cold tires all around. Brake temperatures are low. We need to get some heat into them. Obviously, the first time I've driven this car track combo before, so just getting used to it. You can really push this LMP4. It's got a lot of grip. This corner is so important to get right. Not like that. How do I keep all the what in my head, Adam Stewart? Not quite sure what you, uh, you mean by that. Or have I just proved you wrong? Because it's immediately gone out of my head and I've forgotten what you I was talking about. I 
remember this corner being tighter because it hinks back to the left again there. That's right. And now towards turn one. Seven minutes remaining on the clock. Oh, we need to break a bit earlier than that. I think I need to move the bias further to the back as well. Locking up those fronts a lot, like Jim says. Mr. Spotter, very concerned about my tyres, and rightly so. They feel a bit flat already. Oh, I get you now, Adam. I think Racing Life does a good job for me in terms of making it all nice and visually accessible, but I guess it's just bulk life, you know? He's He's got an eye for the detail. He likes to remember these things. I don't know, it just, just sticks. The leader's just done it. 124.30. 124.3 is the immediate benchmark, but no doubt that's going to get lower once more people start setting some times on the boards. What's our first lap going to be? 25 flat. The guy behind has just done a 125.26. The leader has just done a 124.00. Benchmark's now been lowered to a 124 flat. So we're about a second off the pace here. But I know there's plenty more time to be found. Just need to start pushing these limits a bit. What a great car though. Sector 1 is 0 0.48 off the pace. Nice, there's half a second immediately. It's going to bump us up onto the front row maybe. Although we're not even halfway through qualifying yet, so let's not get our hopes up. Gained a bit more time there. Oh, I remember that from Hot Cars. I remember that corner. Oh, he's up on two wheels up ahead of me. You don't want to uh, run wide on that big sweeper because the gravel is immediately on the exit of the corner. If you hit the gravel, it just pulls you off to the side of the track. Oh, we lost a lot there. Thanks to the traffic, we got held up a bit. Seventh position. Sector 1 is 0.48 off the pace. We need to find a tent in Sector 2. Car right. We're right. Five minutes to go. Five minutes left. I'm going to drop back a bit, actually. This lap's already been been uh, affected. Caught up with those guys. I was seven tenths up. I only gained a tenth on that lap in the end. Because we lost it all in the final few corners. So I need to build a bit of a gap. Sector 1 is 2.6 off the pace. Not get caught up in those guys' fight. Although saying that, there's some people in behind as well. Should we let those go? Yeah, let's let those go as well. Car right, clear to the right. I just don't want any traffic whatsoever, because I know there's a lot of time in the final sector, at least half a second to be found. Sector 2 is 3.2 seconds off the pace. The guy behind has just done it. 125.00. Let's drop back a bit more. Let's really get the run. Here we go. Alright, this should be good. Nice clear track, kind of, up ahead of us. Sector 3 is 1.6 seconds off the pace.
good so far. Matching my PB. Sector one is zero point four five off the pace. Tenth down, heading onto the straight, but that's fine. It's all in the final sector. That's where the time is. I lost a lot in the last couple of corners because I got held up. Patterson, good to see you, mate. See, look, that's four tenths. That's going to jump us up to maybe fourth on the grid. There's still a few more, few more bits and pieces in it. It's your best lap in this session. Sectors one and two are zero point four five off the pace. Sector three times okay. That's two minutes left. Two minutes. So I think we'll get two more laps in at this pace in quality. See if we can bump ourselves up the grid any further. We've been desperately lacking a good result in this LMP4 series. We had a few shocking so races. Zero point three seven off the pace. Nice, there we go. Good run onto the straight. We're not going to be able to win the championship, but at least we might be able to salvage a few more spots in the standings. Get a bit more prize money on Bulk's board. six cents up I saw that I saw that in the corner of my eye then oh there we go sector one is 0.37 off the pace sector two is 0.28 off the pace sector three time is fast 2 thousandths ahead of third and a quarter of a second behind pole and this is the last lap of quality but I think we're going to get held up here unless I can use this to my advantage on the straight and get a bit of a slipstream. No, we're going to catch him before. Right side. It's going to compromise us. Keep it steady. Clear to the right. You're two tenths off the pace in sector one. Maybe not so. Managed to get a good exit. Half a tenth up. <laughs> Is this your first Bolt Brogan stream, Sean? Surely not. Man, the myth the moustache. Oh! Ah! Oh. oh, that ah. that figures coming into the pits. Got held up by the AI. I'm a I'm a I'm a fast lap there. Oh bugger! Never mind. Still second on the grid. That's not bad at all. That's that's a good re race result potential from there. And that is beautiful. Wow. Never mind. Never mind. Wasn't meant to be pole position, but that is confirmation of the results. We are second on the grid. Quarter of a second off Guillaume Simoes. Uh, who was leading the championship? Richard Koch Jr. So we're actually, this could be good in terms of points if it finishes like it is. But these LMP4 races rarely finish the way they, they start. So, we've got a nice clear track. We've got nice ambient temperatures. Let's continue to race one. Fingers crossed for a dry race. What have we got? B2, 50 yes. Minutes. we got a dry track. We've got light cloud. We've got nice temperatures. I don't think it's going to rain. So, realistically, what kind of lap times are we doing? 1 minute 20, so we're going to be doing, in a 15 minute race, 10 laps, maybe? So that is more than enough fuel, actually. That's a stack of fuel. 
Surely we need more fuel than that. Or is this LMP4 not that thirsty? I don't know. We'll see. But this is what we've got, guys. It's going to be the last race of the stream. We are the leading MCR S2000 car in the field. Obviously, we've got Metal Morrow, MRX, Duratec P4s, and MCR S2000s. We're the leading one. So, our main championship rival, Richard Koch Jr., we're heaps of points behind. So, let's just... Let's just get a good result, and let's just score as many points as we can, and let's see how, how fall, let's see how it all falls after that. But yeah, this is going to be my last race of the stream, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, don't forget to smash that like button. You know the drill. Say hi in chat and subscribe, because we've got some more series to finish off, and then in the very near future for Bulk Brogan, we're going to be able to register for the WEC, World Endurance Championship, which is going to be epic. Multi-class, longer races... Maybe the final series we do before our Formula One career. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> wow. Anyway, let's focus on the here and now. Let's not get too carried away with the future. Bulk Brogan doesn't like to do that. Unless it's about avoiding the authorities, in which case, let's definitely think about the future. Okay, rolling start. P2. 15 minute race. No pit stops. Hopefully no weather. Let's do this. <laughs> Oh! Bit blinded by the sun there. Thankfully... Go, go, go! Collisions were disabled. We managed to get through in one piece. Thank you, Sean! Thank you, Weather Sean! Defend that inside. All right. Clear right. The sun... is... Even lower in the sky now. That sunset is beautiful. These LMP4 races have all taken place at sunset-ish. That's that's kind of blinding. That's it's kind of difficult to see. Where's the apex? Time to get stuck in. It's in the middle of a sunbeam somewhere. So second place wasn't a great start. Let's see what we can build from here. Got some nice slipstream though. On your left. Getting dived on the banked corner on the inside here. On the Let's left. defend around the outside. Nicely done. On your left. On your left. Oh, for some reason my brake Clear balance right. has reset itself. That's why I locked up. Need to put that back down to like 56, I think it was. I was locking up at the start of quality heaps. So for some reason it's reset between quality and the race. Far right. Still there. Epic Still dive there. from the AI there. Very opportunistic. But we've got the inside line. Gonna hold them off. That's it. Don't want to lose track of the leader. We don't want to lose that slipstream coming onto the back straight shortly. The longest straight on the course. Hopefully break just a little bit earlier this time. Get that line. Get the exit. There we go, got the exit. Nicely done. We're still in contention. This is great pack racing this. Could we be on for another win? Twelve and a half minutes to go. On your left. I'm being dived again. Let's run the wall of death around the outside. Hold your line. Hold your line. Still, Still there. there. Wow, very opportunistic Clear from the AI. Line. It's all over the curbs there. He's actually Chatter. taken the lead. On your right. Clear right. Right side. Clear right. Change of lead. Machado's now into the lead of the race. Thanks, Jezza. The leader's just done it. 124.34. Okay, Dan. Come on. Stay focused. Apexes and exits. Apexes and exits. Right side. Clear. clear oh, he had a wobble. Rewind. We're all right. I had nowhere to go but give him just a little tap done. in the back. Couldn't uh, avoid that zero. one. A very minor contact. Shouldn't have any kind of damage on the car. Because don't forget, full damage is enabled for all of these races. 
It's not like I'm running the car in cotton wool. We're going to have to suffer the consequences of our actions if we bin it. Left side. Still there. I was too focused on the car ahead. Should have been focused on my own braking point. Still there. Hold your line. We're going to have to defend this one around the outside again. Steady. Still there. Nice little Still rear there. slide there. These cars dance all over the place. Steady. Clear left. Left side. He's still there. Clear Taking a bit left. of curb there. Car left. Hold your line. It's four-way fight Still for there. the lead. Still there. Clear okay, left. managed to hold on to third. Brilliant. This nice. is intense stuff. P3, that was at 125.52. Sector 1 is 0.7 off the pace. Sector 2 is... Car right. Hold your line. Wow. Hold your line. Hold your line. We're right. AI really are just <laughs> really putting on a good show today. Every race. Right well, maybe apart from the... Uh, the first Formula 3 race at Daytona has been absolutely superb in terms of action. Okay, late apex, put the power down. They're going side by side. We're already a third of the way through the race. We're one position below where we started, but this could go any way. And that's what these LMP4s are, or these P4s are about. I keep on saying LMP, they're not LMs, they're just P4s. See the AI trying to get the cut back on the inside there. Oh, there's a bit of contact between the two leaders there. I'm going to try that tight line. Get that cut back. The sun is actually getting quite low in the sky here. It could get dark before the end of the race. That sun could drop below the horizon, I suspect. Right. We've got to try something different here. Right side. He's still there. Still there. Clear right. He backs out of it wisely. Oh, line. he's going for the cutback. That's why. He's trying to get him on the inside Keep for this one. That's a new one. Still there. Clear he's line. got me. Down to fourth. We'll get him back. Down to fourth right. It's anybody's race, this. about getting that timing right on the final lap eight and a half minutes to go approaching the halfway point in about a minute's time look at this he's uh, kicking up a bit of grass on the inside there big concertina effect as everybody tries to navigate this herp in I'm going to do the cutback, switch back to the inside, which now becomes the outside for these two corners. Got him, round the outside for third. Got a great run onto the main start, finish straight here. They're defending. The leader has just done 124.66. That lap time was 125.34. Now they're not defending, they're attacking. Clear, clear to the right, on your right. All this fighting has brought 5th and 6th and 7th into the mix as well now. We've got a 7 car fight for the lead! <laughs> this is awesome. Left side, clear to the left. Alright Dan, halfway home. We've got plenty of fuel. Left side. Give him space on the inside. Hold your line. That's a back out of it big time then. Hold your line. Let's get that slipstream. Still there. Hold your line. Just can't seem to make a move. They're just holding the Keep it steady. holding it side by side up there. Still there. Use the banking on the outside. Big Still kick there. of Oppo there. Almost binned it. Still Exclamation there. mark. Big wiggle. Still there. Stay right. Three wide. Clear left. That's it. 
get out of that one as soon as they said three wide. Oh, bump. Sorry, mate. Okay, now it's starting to get aggressive. It's starting to get feisty now. Got a great run out of the final corner. Still Six and a half minutes to go. Hold your line. Hold your line. I was a bit divey, but I had a tiny overlap. Clear left. There we go. Up to second. Let's keep it up. You've just done it on 25.72. Right, let's get back in with our hunt for the leader here. Limoe is currently in first. Thought he was going to get a bit of breathing space then. Nah, mate. <laughs> grass on the right hand side there but we're three tenths up on our pb and we've got the slipstream here oh, that's richard coach jr championship leader is up to third behind us far left trying to move on the inside still there going to use that banking clear left we've defended it now can we attack it right side it's a dive there. clear to the right we made it stick though. Come on, Dan. Good stuff. Keep it coming. Now time to pull away with five minutes to go in the race. No mistakes, as the sun is definitely going down below the horizon over there. It's absolutely stunning Just sunset this. here. Hold your nerve. We can win this. Imagine race pace. This is good. You're leading. That one was at 124. Oh! Right that's a hell of a dive there. Right Can't turn in on him. Three wide. You're the one. Right. Just when I thought I had the lead there. there. Wow, right. round the outside. Nice one, Simoes. Excellent move. On your what? Still there. Let's use the wide line to get the better run. Pin him tight to the apex. And just like that, down to third, but back up to second again. <laughs> Four minutes, this is this is anybody's. Far left, three wide, Ooh. two left. Clear left, left side. Oh no! Push now, we can catch this guy. Not quite sure what happened then. Whether they moved on the braking or whether I turned in too sharply. But it wasn't ideal. The LMP4 curse strikes again. I thought I'd saved it. I thought that was going to be one hell of a drift. I think I've got no damage. I think I'm good. Oh, down to 11th. That was fighting for the lead as well. Oh, I can't believe that. Come on, get your head back into it. Keep it smooth. Focus on these lines. Might have three laps to go because it's a relatively short lap here. So let's see if we can get back into that pack up ahead of us. Maybe get like a P7 or something. That's so unfortunate. I have to have a look at the replay of that later and see what happens. It all happened a bit too fast in real time for me to actually know. I don't want to say it was their fault or my fault just yet. I need to have a look at that. What I do know is I need some slipstream. Stein in front is now 2.5. Ah, oh, that's so unfortunate. <laughs> Sorry, Jezza. Sorry, Sean. Yeah, that's pretty much, Sean. I just seem to be going sideways. There was definitely contact with the guy ahead. Two minutes to go. Two minutes. Yep, two minutes and two laps. I reckon seventh could potentially be on the cards here if I can get this pack. Twenty-four point nine two. All 
right in behind the rear wing there. About as close as you want to get. Less than a tenth in it. On your left. The AI seems to be able to keep that much tighter there. Okay, so we've got this guy's slipstream. Let's move over to this side of the track. Let's get around the outside. Oh, contacts up ahead. They're going very nastily around that. Had to take a bit of an avoiding action at high speed there. In the middle. Clear to the left. Bit of a dive. Oh, turning in on me there. That's fair enough. I did put my nose really right into the action. Got him! Well, that, that didn't take as long as I expected. And we're back up to seventh. Oh, what could have been? Look at the front pack. Top five within a second of each other. B7, last lap. We're quickest right now. You've just done a 125.00. Far right. Still there. Keep it steady. Clear right. The last lap of the race. I'm not going to catch the guy ahead, but this is all about doing maximum lap time to defend now. Oh, that's a bit wide. Ah, it's beautiful, beautiful sunset. Again, a bit wide on the run into the straight there, but I think we got away with it. We can pull away from that slipstream. Oh, they're following me in the mirror. That's awesome. A bit wide, and then tuck it back in. Apex late in the corner. Break just at the gravel transition on the right there. Nice late apex again, because you need to pull it over to the left immediately. So you can switch it to the right. Bit of patience here, use the dip in the apex and get the throttle down. Little kink to the left, it's going to be my best lap of the race. It's going to be the fastest lap of the race. P7, that's the end of the race. Never mind. It's 124.2, so the pace was definitely there. Just, oh, that was... That was, that was so disappointing. On your left. Oh well, you can't win them all. Qualified in second, came back to seventh in the end of that. So, and uh, Richard Kosh Jr. finishes in second and Simoez as well. So they just keep on scoring more points. They just keep on scoring more points. Still there. Let's have a look at the replay, shall we? I do apologize in advance for the sound that's going to happen. There's no way around it because I can't skip to a specific point in the LMP4s or any replay for that matter. I'm really sorry about the sound. I hate it just as much as you do. In fact, I'm going to mute it. On the broadcast, so it's just my mic. And I'm going to bring it back in when it gets to that time again. Because nobody should have to listen to that. And Reza Studios really should invent some kind of replay system where you can skip to a specific point. Instead of having to fast forward through the entire replay. <laughs> Sorry, Chuba. Alright. Surely there's got to be a better system than this. But look how epic this fight was. Look how long this fight went on for. It just never died down. It never stopped. I think this is the lap, isn't it? No, it's the next lap. Because there we are into the lead. And then we got dived up the inside by the AI there. And it's... Is it this one? Yeah, okay. Let's have a look at this. Let me put the audio back on. And let's see what the hell happened here. You ready? Let's do some dissection. So we're approaching the corner here. I kind of jinked to the inside. Oh, that's on me, that. Look at this. So this is quarter speed. 
I'm on the brakes, he's on the brakes. I get sideways, lose control, tag both of us, and then kind of drift it, kind of drift it, kind of holding it, kind of holding it. And then I think, okay, I'll just get the power down, straighten up the steering, and all of a sudden it just grips and spits me out the other way. That is the definition of a tank slapper, that. Wow. Let's have another look in real time, shall we? So yeah, I should have been a bit more to the right hand side here because this guy was always going to slow down at the apex and I should have just gone clean around the outsides. Yeah, look, I should have just been wider. I'm trying to save it, trying to save it, and then spam. I don't know why spam is an appropriate verb of being spat out to the side of the track there, but that is what it is. Anyway, that... <laughs> That was the race that could have been... That that could have been a P2, that. That's that's very... Oh, that's, that's so, so frustrating. Anyway, let's continue. So, that gets us six points at least. It's not as if we... Uh, it's not as if we didn't score any points at all there. And it's a bit of a, an anticlimactic finish after some of the epic racing we've had. Especially in that race, but throughout the entire stream today. This has been a really good one. I've really enjoyed it. Sometimes the AI can be a bit dud, but... Man, that stock car race at Bathurst was superb. That GT3 race in um, Montreal in the rain was epic. The uh, Formula 3, maybe not so much at Daytona. The Formula 3 Interlo uh, Indianapolis was an absolute stress case. And then this was superb up until that kind of brain fart moment there. But now I take responsibility for that. Bulk Brogan holds his hand up and says, you know, mistakes happen. They're usually by other people, but, you know, mistakes do happen. <laughs> anyway, let's go and put those results yes, into... One, mate. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on a second. George Senior has just dropped his membership for 25 months on me. Awesome stream. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed this one today as well. That was epic fun. So in terms of the championship, um, I've actually moved up a spot to sixth somehow. I've gained points on Pedro, Pedro, bleh, Pedro Suarez. Although I'm still behind Bento Galdino. He's jumped heaps on me there. I'm 15 points behind. Wow. And massive amounts of points behind Richard at the lead of the championship. So dropping further back, I think maybe if I can... Well, actually, is it even possible to kind of even get 15 points in the final round? Maybe. It's going to be a tough ask, but I think 6th place is probably the best I can hope for in this LMP4. Sorry, not LMP4. In this P4 Championship. So let's pop some music back on. Let's continue, and let's get those results into racing life. And let's wrap this stream up, shall we? Where's the music at? There it is. I knew it was there somewhere. So, okay. Competition. Advance. LMP4 at Campo Grande. A circuit that I really enjoyed, actually. That was lots of fun. Qualified it second on the grid. And finished it in seventh. So, at least I still get my uh, sponsorship money for finishing in the top ten. But I don't get any fame because, like I said, winning the GT3 series has maxed out my fame at 50 for the moment so far. So, it's all about the prize money. And the sponsor money. And that's that's good. That's good bank. Good bank. So let's continue. And let's sum things up. So at the end of part 12 of Racing Life in Automobilista 2. Which is absolutely insane by the way. I never thought it would ever get to part 12. Maybe even like part 5. So this is great. The, the moustache lives on. The, the, the legacy of the bulk. It just keeps on going. But to wrap things up in part 12. We have 50 fame, 141 experience, 855,493 bulk coin in the bank. And that includes taking part in 56 races with 14 poles, 28 podiums and 19 wins amongst them. We signed a new sponsorship deal with Citrix today. And what else did we do? Okay, so we, uh, we finished second in the American Stock Car Series. We finished sixth in the American Stock Car Championship because that was the finale at Bathurst. We won the GT3 race at Montreal, which gave us the championship win. Then a 12th and a second in the Formula 3 races. And then a seventh. So, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag. But epic stuff. 
So what can we expect next time? Well, the first race of the next stream, part 13, unlucky for some, is going to be the American Formula 3 Championship, no matter what, because that's the only race that we've got left in May. So if we switch over to AMS2 mode, and let's just remind ourselves where that stands, so we can get a little taster. It's the season finale. It's a Bathurst, and we're 10 points behind the championship leader and 11 points ahead of third place. So unless we get a crazy race for Leon Aguera, then we're pretty much settled into second. But you never know, stranger things have happened. And Formula 3 is at Bathurst. Come on, that's going to be that's going to be epic. Um, but in terms of racing life, yep, yeah, that is the one race that we've got left to do. And then in the following month, well, actually, no, not in the following month. In the next stream, we're going to have to sign up to the WEC. We're going to be signing up to, uh, yeah, to the to the GTE class because that is actually in the same month. So we've done our form um, LMP4 race. We've got a Formula 3 race to do. And then after that, we're going to be registering for GTEs. We're going to be registering for the biggest race of Buck's career so far because our fame's at 50. And to get, you know, to get into this championship, we need 45 fame. So that's good. Prize money of 1.25 million on the line. That could be epic. And we've got 100,000 registration fee. So that's, you know, that's good. Now let's have a look at the car dealer. What kind of GTE cars are available? Okay, well, there are three to choose from. We've got the Chevy C8, the Porsche 911 RSR 19, or the BMW M8 GTE. So next stream is going to go like this. Formula 3 season finale at Bathurst. And then you guys are going to pick a GTE car for me. You're going to pick one of those three. And we're going to go racing it against LMP2s. And the races might turn into an hour because it's what? It's the WEC. You've got to have longer races there. So that could be quite interesting. So details. 1.25 million on offer. And we have a race at Spa. The season opening at Spa. We're back at Montreal. We've got Snetterton. We've got Kailami. We've got Virginia again. And then the season finale of the World Endurance Championship is at Monaco. <laughs> oh my. That's going to be an amazing series. So stick around for that, guys. Because this could be our ticket to the Formula 1 season. Anyway, that is enough for today. That's what we're expecting next time. I think that pretty much wraps everything up. I'm going to go and have the weekend off. I think I've earned a break. I've got a nice bowl of ice cream waiting for me in about five minutes once this stream finishes. And then weekend off. Because on Monday, I'm going to be doing some league racing. I don't know if you can see it here on the, uh, on the strap board. So, new Fanatec wheel. Check. HF8 review video. Check. Just enjoy it. Oh yeah, definitely check. Uh, bin car championship. We've done that, but there's more rounds. Oh, that's community rally. That's coming up next Friday. That's BMW Pro Car. That's Group B Rear Wheel Drive at Greece. That's going to be fun. So check that out on Friday. But on Monday, on Monday, Gravel Trap Legends GT4 Americana Series. You know the guys who hosted the GT1, the McLaren F1 GT1 series that I raced in, and also the BMW Pro Car Series that I raced in recently as well. Yeah, they're hosting a GT4 series. It's going to be epic. I can't wait. And that starts on Monday. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, that's all my shill done. That's all my lovely goodness done on this stream. It's 11.47 p.m. in Brisbane. Ice cream and bed, I think. Very much so. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not too late to leave the stream a like. Even if you're watching the replay, uh, Raphael, because I know you're an hour behind. <laughs> Look after yourselves, guys, okay? It's been an absolute pleasure. Sean, Tuba, Boggy, Olaf, Sim Racers Arms, JDF, Jezza, George, uh, Tuba, Sean Patterson, Sean Finn. I'm scrolling a bit more. Adam Stewart, Sim Racers Arms, Kevin M, Vushel, Andre. I'm just keep on going. Punch a Waterfall, not to forget uh, JDF Doggo for the donation and the membership as well as George and also Talonin. Thank you for the dollary dues as well. You're probably long gone now. Rob Mitchell as well. Great to see you all. I love you all. You look after yourselves. 
And I'll catch you all again soon, all right? And last but not least, thank you so much for the subscribe, Ghost Ed. Love your work. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> all right, see you, bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.